Good morning, everybody. Yes, honey. Fucking yes. Ma, happy birthday. The day's here. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy. Happy birthday. Excited for you. 
It's going to be an incredible day. I have, I have surprises. So many surprises. So many surprises. <laughs> Good morning, CJ. How are you, dear? Brother Copsy, you have an incredible day, my friend. Good morning, Kay. How are you, dear? Good morning, Henny. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, you have no idea. You better get the box of tissues ready. I love you so much, Ma. It's going to be such a good day. But hopefully they're good tears. Hopefully they're good Of course, they're good tears. But much love, Ma. Oh, CJ. You have, that's not even the one. That's not even the one. I'm so excited to show her. I'm just going to say, Ma, there's so many. There's so many pictures for you today. <laughs> I've been working feverishly. Good morning, CJ, K. So, I'm so excited for today. But, this, the camera, of um, the Laverne camera flipped around, so now we have, oh, I need to do, do this. Oh, I didn't do that right. There we go. Yeah, look at that big ball of energy coming up. That's for you, Ma. And everybody else. But happy birthday, Ma. I'm so excited. And cheers. Oh, thank you, dear. <laughs> yes, Ma. Yes. Thank you, honey. You probably look beautiful as always. I mean, sure. Oh, yeah, I'm always working on something. Mm. So, good morning, beautiful Henny. All right, let's get this day started off the right way. Cheers, everybody. Everybody's having an incredible Ma's birthday morning. I love you. I love it, Christy. Yes, just because. Happy birthday, Ma!
Well, I'm doing great this morning, Kayla. It's Ma's birthday. Happy birthday, I mean. I love you, Gary. Yes, today is the best day. It's the day Ma was brought into our lives. And you're so lucky you, like, know her on a personal level. Morgan! Morgan says happy birthday. Morgan! Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. What? What? What's say happy birthday? What's say happy birthday? Oh, woo -woo -woo. Okay. More is a happy birthday. Good morning, Henny from K. Oh, Morgan, she's so sweet. She's so goofy, especially when I get to she. I think about how playful she is by where her ears are. If they're flipped all the way back, I know it's go time, but it's still early yet, so they're only half cocked. They're only, she's still, now she's eating breakfast, so who fucking knows? She's crazy, but, oh, I don't know if you guys heard the news. I don't, I don't know if you guys saw it on NBC or Fox, but it's Ma's fucking birthday. Oh, Ma said thank you, Morgan. She's drinking water now. She'll be back. And we'll run some commercials. And we'll be back for 420. Oh shit, I about ran a song. That wouldn't do me any good. Cheers, everybody. I don't know why I'm saying cheers. Happy birthday, Ma! UniquelyMeLLC.com, your one stop shop for hemp derived wellness. Discover the world of hemp derived health at UniquelyMeLLC.com, a premier online destination catering to all your CBD, CBG, and hemp product needs. 
This website is a haven for those seeking natural, effective solutions for wellness and self-care. From luxurious lotions to delicious edibles, UniquelyMeLLC.com offers a comprehensive range of products, each carefully crafted to enhance your well-being. At UniquelyMeLLC.com, quality and customer satisfaction are paramount. Whether you're new to hemp-derived products or a seasoned enthusiast, the site provides an array of options to suit every need and preference. Explore our selection of topicals, tinctures, edibles, and more, all designed to offer the benefits of hemp in various forms. With a focus on purity, efficacy, and innovation, UniquelyMeLC.com is committed to bringing you the best in hemp wellness. Perfect. Yes, Ma, since it's your birthday, I would like you to do all of the getting stoned words, and thank you very much. That was perfect. So everybody get your bowls loaded, your bongs and your blunts and your joints and your all the good things, and because uh, we're going to smoke for Ma's birthday. And I got to let the dog. I got to close the door. The dogs are back inside. What is that sunrise? That's just ridiculous. I just, that's the same sun I'm seeing over yonder way. Okay, I am back. It's crazy, isn't it? Let me see here. Let me see what the other side looks like. Well, not the other side, the other. Yeah, that's just over Main Street. But I like the other one better. Normally the camera's facing this way. Now it's facing this way. Which is fine. I'd rather it face this way. I like the sun anyway. Well, I do. We do get some good sunsets on the when it's flipped. So, I guess I don't know. So yes, make sure everybody's back this afternoon. We're going to be partying like rock stars for Matt's birthday. We'll do all the, the birthday games. Um, we'll sing happy birthday. Should you think of a good wish, Ma, but don't tell anybody. That's 
it's one thing is it's super flat around here and we get a lot of wind, but we get some dope ass sunrises, sunsets. Birthday, birthday, birthday. It is mine's birthday. Mm. Oh yeah, and it's mine's birthday. So happy birthday. Okay. Cheers, everybody, and happy birthday, Ma. Smoke weed every day. Happy hump day and happy birthday, Ma, again. 
it's, it's going to be plenty of this. It's, it's just not going to stop all day. So, just you know. <laughs> All right, one second, everybody. It is Wednesday, which means if you were in that New Brunswick, Burnt Church area, I highly recommend you stop at Taylor Herbs and Concentrate. Dang it, come on, open. There we go. If you buy one edible, you get the second edible 25% off. That's just a ridiculous deal. That's such a good deal. And... If you go in and you say the phrase that pays this amazing Ma's birthday, when isn't it a good time at Taylor Herbs and Concentrates? You will get a free pre-roll, no purchase necessary. But like I said, every morning, I mean, you're there. Just make the purchase. It's buy a pack of edibles. You get the second one 25% off. And then you buy that one. because you, you just got to It's 25% off. You wouldn't get the first one and not get the second one 25% off. Mm. Okay. So, everybody... Henny, are you still here? I just thought of you this morning. I was just fucking around with different pictures and shit and working on shit. So, I thought of Henny when I saw this one, or when I did this one. I thought that one turned out amazing. Yeah, we're all singing it in our heads now. And... It's Ma's birthday. Right? I thought that was cool. Oh, that's not what I wanted at all. That didn't work out at all. There we go. Ma, happy birthday. So, I figured I went with like a 1920s, 30s vintage cartoon theme. hope you like it. I love it. I thought it turned out amazing. Okay. Back to our sunrise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Ma! Yes, it is. It turned out very cool. I was very, very, very surprised. I, I thought it was amazing. So, yes, it is Ma's birthday, everybody. So make sure that you wish her a big happy birthday. And I uh, will get the stain history ready. I usually have it ready, but. I've been doing birthday things, right? Three little birds, Henny. Yeah, that's such a good song. I got some other cool ones too, but I really was like, that's the only one I really want from, wanted to show. So. It is April 10th, Ma's birthday today. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome to this. Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for April 10th. April 10th is the 100th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 101st in leap years, with 265 days remaining to the end of the year. This is also Happy Siblings Day. <laughs> So if you have any siblings, be sure and share the love. Today's word is bibliotaph. Can you guess what it means? If you guess that it has something to do with books, you are correct. A bibliotaph is one who hoards. Where did I spell it? Hold on. Means! How are you doing, my friend? I saw your comment on the... Uh, 
meditation deal last night. Bro, I know you're super busy. Don't feel bad at all. I know that you pop in when you can, when you can. Like, dude, mad fucking love. Calligraphy is about to pop off with some hot ass shit. A bunch of shows coming up, from my understanding. I don't know, but you guys are always rocking shit, man. And uh, you know I fucking love you, brother. That's why I tag you every morning. I understand that you're busy. I don't mean to, like, blow up your notification shit with shows, but I know that if you get a chance, you always pop over. And so, much love, my friend. Okay. It's funny. Google's like, bro, this ain't a word. I'm like, it's a fucking word. Bibliotaph. Much love, man. Much fucking love. And tell Jen I'm so glad that she liked her picture. I'm thank you so much for sharing it. And yes, thank everybody for all sharing all of the art and everything. It's been amazing, and I can't thank all of you enough. So, all right, bibliotaph. It's a fucking word, I guess. One who hoards books. Who hoards books? This word comes to us from Greek words that mean book and tomb. Interesting. Bibliotaph. I'd like to remind you that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and feel free to share this video with others. Don't forget to stay for the outtakes. And with that, we're going to start in year 837 when Halley's Comet, I've heard it pronounced Halley's and Haley's, but it's, it's spelled Halley's, so that's how I'm going to say it. Halley's Comet made its closest approach to Earth at a distance of 3.2 million miles. In 1710, the Statute of Anne, also known as the Copyright Act of 1710, was the first law regulating copyright. This came into force in Great Britain. This law at the time prescribed a copyright term of 14 years with a provision for renewal of a similar term during which only the author and the printers to whom they chose to license their work could publish the author's creations. The statute influenced copyright law in several other nations, including the United States. This is the birthday of English minister William Booth. Born and Ma. Born April 10th, 1829. He founded the Salvation Army and lived to... That's cool, but it's more importantly Ma's birthday. The age of 83. This is the birthday of politician and publisher Joseph Pulitzer. Born and Ma's birthday. Sure, I'm busy. On April 10, 1847. He's best known for his Pulitzer Prize, which was established from an endowment that he made to Columbia University. Joseph Pulitzer lived to the age of 64. In 1858, after the original Big Ben bell cracked during testing, it was recast into a slightly smaller bell by Whitechapel Bell Foundry. By slightly smaller, I mean that the original bell was 16 tons and the recast bell was a little over 15 tons. In 1865, a day after his surrender to Union forces, Confederate General Robert E. Lee addressed his troops for the last time. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, ASPCA, was founded in New York City on April 10th, 1866 by Henry Berg. He had been abroad and seen people treat their animals very harshly. It upset him. And on his way back home, he came through England and they, they had an association for the prevention of cruelty to animals. And so he founded one here as well. In 1872, the first Arbor Day was celebrated in Nebraska. Arbor Day is a day about trees. National Arbor Day in the United States is celebrated every year on the last Friday in April and is a civic holiday in Nebraska. Other states have their own dates for Arbor Day. The customary observance for Arbor Day is to plant a tree. On the first Arbor Day in 1872, an estimated one million trees were planted. Wow. That's a lot of trees. Whether you hug them or not, <laughs> trees are beneficial. Look, anyone who worries about carbon dioxide, plant more trees. Plants take carbon dioxide, they breathe it in, and they put out oxygen. 
just the way that we breathe in oxygen and put out carbon dioxide. The solution to carbon dioxide is more trees. Mm -hmm. People maybe need to go back to their biology classes. O. Henry's <laughs> second short story collection, The Four Million, was published on April 10th, 1906. This collection included one of his most beloved stories, The Gift of the Magi. I remember the first time I read that. Wowza, on April 10th, 1912, the RMS Titanic set sail from Southampton, England on her maiden and only voyage. Dang, I didn't know that was today. This is the birthday of American actor Harry Morgan, <laughs> born and my birthday. April 10th, 1915. He worked in film, radio, and television, is perhaps best known for his roles in Dragnet and MASH. God bless him. He lived to the age of 96. The Professional Golfers Association, PGA, was created in New York City on April 10th, 1916. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald was first published in New York City by Charles Scribner's Sons in 1925. This is the birthday of Egyptian actor Omar Sharif, born April 10th, 1932. He lived to the age of 83. On April 10, 1939, Alcoholics Anonymous, AA's Big Book, was first published. The first color stereoscopic or 3D film opened on April 10, 1953. It was The House of Wax, a horror film starring Vincent Price. Yikes. <laughs> This was one of those movies that uh, you had to have those special glasses, those, you know, special green and red paper glasses to get the full effect. This is the birthday of author Anne Lamott, born April 10th, 1954. Happy birthday, Anne Lamott. She writes... Happy birthday, Ma. Oh, wrong button. Fiction ...and is an entertaining read, and I particularly enjoyed her book... Bird by Bird, some instructions on writing and life. Bird by Bird. My friend Lisa Crocker turned me on to Anne Lamott. Still alive, Anne Lamott turns 67 in 2021. As most breakups are, this one was in the work for several years before they finally did it. But on this day in 1970, Paul McCartney announced that he was leaving the group for personal and professional reasons. On April 10th, 1971, in an attempt to thaw relations with the United States, China hosted the United States table tennis team for a week long visit. You may have seen a, a depiction of that in the movie Forrest Gump. Yep. Oh, yikes. A tornado landed in Wichita Falls, Texas, killing 42 people in the Red River Valley tornado outbreak on April 10th, 1979. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Glad the weather's nice today. And I hope you did learn something you didn't know before, because I know I sure did. I always do. <clears throat> Again, links to my sources are included in the show notes. Images are retrieved from Bing Images, either public domain. Yes, so please jump over and give her a like and a subscribe and a share. I love Vicki Bauer. She's amazing. And I love doing the this day in history every morning. And it's Ma's birthday. It's always my computer like giving me a notification for something. Oh, here we go. Okay. And to keep good with the theme. Vsauce, Kevin here. I've got 23 babies which means there's a 50% chance two of them have the same birthday? Huh? 
Let me explain. Each one of these babies has a random birthday, meaning that they each have the same chance of having been born on any one of the 365 days in a year. So what are the odds that two of them share the same birthday? We'll keep it simple. No twins, no leap years, no patterns that suggested parents made their babies at non-random specific times. The odds aren't 23 out of 365, which would be about 6%. The odds are actually 50%. There's a 50% chance that out of 23 random people, two have the same exact birthday, which seems impossible given that we've got so few babies and so many possible birthdays. And if we have 50 babies, the odds of a birthday match jump up to 97%. At 75, it's 99.97%, making it a virtual certainty that when you get 75 babies together, or 75 things with birthdays, they don't have <laughs> to be babies, two of them <coughs> will share a birthday. <coughs> the birthday paradox is a veridical paradox. It's surprising and absurd sounding, but we have the math to prove it's true. How is it possible that so few babies can have such a high chance of sharing a birthday? And how is it that despite 365 possibilities, we only need a sixth of that number to be pretty sure there's a match? The easiest way to do this isn't to, excuse me, babies, babies. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Babies. Erasing babies. All right, that's not good. The easiest way to do this isn't to calculate the probability that two of any number of babies share the same birthday. It's to calculate the probability that they don't. To do that, we assume that baby number one has been born. So the probability of this baby having a birthday is one or 365 over 365. Then we multiply that by baby number two's probability of not sharing that birthday. 360. Oh, I'm so sorry, Vicky. I hope you have an amazing day and motherfucking allergies. I'm so sorry. Smoke some weed and uh, mm, I wish I could. I don't know. Allergies suck. It's not good. But it's Ma's birthday. Happy birthday, Ma. Hope you're not having allergies either. I hope nobody's having allergies. I'm so sorry, Vicky. 4 over 365. We multiply that result by baby number 3's probability of not sharing a birthday with either baby number 1 or baby number 2, which is 363 over 365. And we keep doing this for as many babies as we want to calculate the odds for. At baby 23, we're multiplying by 343 over 365. To simplify this calculation, we can write it as 364 factorial. We'll start with yeah. 364 I don't know what that means. 365 over 365 is just 1. Over 342 factorial, because 365 minus our 23 babies gives us 342, times 365 days out of the year, raised to the 22nd power, which is our 23 yep. babies no minus baby 1 again okay and the result of the whole equation gives us 0. 0.492703 or about 49.3 percent again yep no clue i just thought it was cool so babies and birthdays and happy birthday ma Oh, here we go. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, this is silly. It's not going to say anything. All right, that didn't work out like I wanted it to at all. Oh, no shit. What is this channel? This invaluable guide to your birthday has... Oh, that's not what I wanted at all. Oh, this is cool. April 10th is the day of boldness. Individuals born on April 10th are the kind of people who are not afraid to be themselves. They have the courage to fight in order to capitalize on projects and ideas. Also, they are not afraid to contradict or fight for their ideas. Those born today do not seek a confrontation at all costs. They are not daring people, in any sense. Their courage is more a kind of moral power, which is based on strong principles and common sense. Often in life, those born on April 10th, there is a radical change in terms of career. Reasons for this choice can be the inappropriate premature preparation oriented in the wrong direction, a rash decision or parental intervention. When they realize their true calling, they do not hesitate to drop their old career. The importance of discovering this vocation is not overly emphasized. Those born on April 10th are not likely to be indifferent. Instead, they may give others the impression that they are taking too many risks. People might think they are even reckless. But viewed from a certain perspective, their daring deeds are sometimes popular and the risks they take may be considered wise decisions. Persons born on April 10th do not believe their decisions are risky. Equally true is that these people are fascinated by what chance means. This fascination is manifested not only figuratively, in the everyday life, but also literally. Natives seek their fortune in both casinos and betting houses. What attracts them to these places is the emotion of competition and of course the pleasure to evaluate their chances in advance. People born on April 10th really love their profession and care very much for their independence. For these reasons, it is difficult for them to have a normal family life. Paradoxically, they feel a strong need for stability. In this regard, they are extremely attached to a colleague or a friend who will always be with them. In fact, their ties tend to be nonconformist. Natives of April 10th are of two types. The first is lonely, working alone on projects. This type of person develops a style, a craft or a skill in isolation from others. The second type of person born on April 10th is the type of social-fledged star. They represent the disciple, the leader that is looking for followers. This second type is represented by people who have a special missionary zeal. Because of this zeal, they gather other people around them in the most energetic to support a particular cause. Introverts born on April 10th devote their entire energy to research and technical staff. Unlike them, the extroverts born on this day consume all their energy in social activities. They try to organize a group or company, using a grander plan. They are open and feel the need to be appreciated. However, these players are not cuddly or profitable for people. They are there to give them false pride and conceit. More evolved people recognize that blind egotism and belief in their own infallibility can be fatal at the next confrontation. Real fighters, know their limits. Although they tend to overcome these limitations, they rarely succeed. Those born on this day despise too bold plans and projects of poor quality. They are happiest when starting from an idea, they found a plan that will lead to a master hit. Tips. Avoid too intense emotions and avoid your impulsive, obsessive side. Appreciate the simple pleasures of life. Personal success is as important as social. Follow your heart once in a while, not just the mind. Learn to relax. If your birthday celebration falls on April 10th, there is certainly planning that needs to take place this year. Beware of some abrupt change at home in the next year. Family relationships will be favorable. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Who fucking knows? Hmm. Let's smoke a bowl for mom's birthday. Happy birthday, ma.
We'll do this one. Cheers, everybody.
Cheers, everybody. Happy birthday, Ma. Okay. All right. Best way to clean trampoline is a garden hose and a sprayer dealie. And maybe some soap and just spray the shit out of it. And try not to climb on it. If you have like if you can get like a longer brush, that's great. And you can scrub it, but don't try do not climb on it while it's wet. And then uh otherwise you spray the shit out of it, spray it off really, really good, and then just let it sit for a day for the day on a windy day, sunny day, whatever day. And then uh it, it, once it's dry, it's fine. But when it's wet and you um go on it, it'll stretch the shit out of it. We've I've ruined many a trampolines with water. And lots of fun. Like put a sprinkler under it. That's a good time. But it stretches them out so bad. So yes. If nobody has told you yet. Mom by the way. Happy freaking birthday up in this B. Yay. Oh yeah. Especially if you know. It's just like dirt and shit. Whatever. Just spray it off really good. And uh, let it dry. And I mean. And she's a little thing. I mean. On a nice day, absolutely, go out, put a sprinkler on it, let her put her bathing suit on or some whatever, and jump on a trampoline. Be careful, because it's slippery. I'm going to say that for a while. You know, it's going to be slippery. So be careful. But it's a lot of fun. It's just... um, Yeah, it's fucking... You know, trampolines are so much fun. But, yeah, if you want to clean it, just water. Let it dry. It'll be all right. A good rain will help a lot. Um, let's do... Oh, yeah, I, like, I grew up with a uh, Rottweiler, well, multiple dogs, but I remember I would have a Rottweiler that would come up there and play with us and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like a rite of passage. There's some shit you gotta do. Destroy some shit. Whatever. Definitely, definitely that dog is gonna rip that fucking trampoline when he stays with us in the claws, but whatever. Okay, one second, everybody. Right, if the special is free, yeah, you can find a lot of fucking. That's the thing is, like, once trampolines, once people grow out of them, they usually just throw them in storage because they're nice to have. But then once you realize that you're never going to use it again, maybe people just sell them for dirt cheap, give them away, or whatever. As long as the poles are there, and once the fucking thing goes to shit, you can do a lot of cool shit with a fucking trampoline frame. That too. All right. To Ma, on this day of joy and sun. A beautiful journey, together, we've begun. Your wisdom, like a river, deep and wide, guides us gently, always by our side, with knowledge vast as the starry sky. You illuminate truths, teach us to fly. Your beauty, both inside and out, shines brightly, without a doubt. So amazing, in every single way, your presence brightens every day. I'm grateful, beyond what words can say, for the gift of you, in every way. Happy birthday, dear Ma shining bright may your year be filled with delight in your wisdom beauty and all you do know deeply we cherish and love you yay happy birthday ma that's cool
Yay, we love you, Ma. Happy birthday, Ma. Oh, I'm not near as sweet as Ma, because it's her birthday. I hope she has some cake or some cookies or some goodies or something. Oh, thank you, Ma. So, I think Rissa will jump up here at some point. Happy birthday, Ma! Um, and then we'll do some birthday shiz. Definitely make sure everybody's back this afternoon. We're going to do birthday games and all of the fun things. But Rissa has a meeting this afternoon, so she's going to come up. And happy birthday, Ma! We're going to come up and do the candle this morning, and then we'll do the birthday games this afternoon. So, no worries. I got to grab more coffee. I'll be right back. Amazing, folks. And happy birthday, Ma. You are so freaking welcome. Okay, so anybody can answer these, but it's just for Ma. I mean, that's the theme or whatever. It's birthday, so. Yes, happy birthday, Ma! Okay, what is, what's your favorite birthday memory? And you can't say today because it's not over yet. There's more to come. Is it something from like your childhood? Or maybe your... Oh, well, we fucking love you so much. I don't know how else we can say it. Like, you're just so awesome. I love hanging out with you so much every day. I feel like I have connected with you for like so much music and history and stuff. And like, I don't know. We did it. We did it. And, uh... Big shout out to CJ, because if it wasn't for CJ, I would have never met you. And I definitely love CJ so much, too. So I don't want to take away from that. But it's just your birthday. So I love to you. And thank you, CJ. And yes, there's plenty more to come. So is it like a you know memory from or yesterday or mine? Oof. Mine could be last year. I went out to dinner and had a really del delicious steak dinner. Um, ooh, I remember like probably... Shit, eight. Shout out to CJ. What? What? Oh, thank you so much. That's amazing. Well, much love, Ma. Much love. I love you so much. You are so amazing, and yeah, I I just I love hanging out with you every day. You're one of my favorites here on EBTV. I have to say that. So I said, it. fight me. Whatever. I'm sorry. I play favorites. Whatever. It's her birthday. So, um, a few years ago, I remember we went out and I had a really good porterhouse steak with Darcy and some family or whatever. And then we went to, like, a kid's t-ball game, one of her nephew's t-ball game. And that was always cool. That was just a good day. Uh, what else I got? I have some good memories from my childhood. I just... Um, I remember my 21st birthday. I, we drank... A liter of Pinnacle Whipped Vodka, straight, chasing it with Mountain Dew. And I was legit, I swear to God, hungover for the next three days. I've never drank that shit since. It was so gross. It was horrible. But, you know, I was 21. So it was like, fuck it. 
Oh, it was so gross. Does anybody else have a favorite birthday memory? One second, I'll be right back. Anybody have anything? Ooh, I did it with Crown on my 24th when I was drunk for two days. Oh, what? Well, you can do like worse, I guess. Yeah, I mean, does anybody have a bad birthday memory? Was going to the theater for my birthday with CJ. Oh, what did you see? How long have you and CJ known each other? Been friends and whatnot. How long have you and Henny known each other? How do you all know each other? I mean, whatever. If you don't have to answer none of it. I'm just curious. I'm just naturally curious. Because I know every year at Broadway. Oh, that's dope. That's so cool. Do you have a favorite show that you've seen then? But um, I know, like, I met CJ through WTC. Well, we've said that before. We talked about that before. Um, And then I remember she was like, oh, I've got a couple people I'm going to bring over to have to start watching UBTV. And... Phantom is amazing. I think a fun fact about Phantom is, like, it originally his mask was supposed to cover his whole face, and then it broke or something of that sort. I don't know exactly. But they ended up just doing the half of the mask, and then it was a hit. Everybody loved it. But um, I've seen, like, Phantom... I remember, like, for a fucking field trip, we went to, like, a pavilion and saw it. But, I mean, I was probably in, like, sixth or seventh grade. I remember it was cool, but I don't really remember much of it. Oh, shit, you're... You know what time it is. And I'm blooping this shit. Yerp, yerp. Yerp, yerp. Yerp, yerp. Okay. It's the yerp, yerp alert. Happy birthday, Ma! And what up? What up? What up? Ooh. Yerp! All right, so we'll show some of the pictures or whatever that we've done this morning for Ma. We've got... Happy birthday, Ma. What? What? Hmm. It's weird. I just had this feeling that you liked the color blue. I think a little birdie might have said something. Or maybe an eagle. Haha. <laughs> and then this one. Because we got to love the old vintage cartoons, Ma. So... I freaking love it. Ooh, a very little birdie. Oh, yeah, honey, that was the first one. There's a bunch. So I will definitely, we'll show them all at the end of the day. I'll send them all to you, Ma, um, at the end of the day or whatever. But, yeah, there's there's a good amount of pictures for her. So it's because I love Ma. Okay. If if you could have any birthday cake flavor, what would it be? This was an easy, super easy one for me. Darcy used to, would get it for me every year. Red velvet cake. I just want a red velvet cake for my birthday. Done. That's all I want. Or she'd get me red velvet cupcakes. Good morning, Karen. How are you today? It's Ma's birthday. Say what? Happy birthday, Ma. Um... Lemon. Ooh. Interesting. I'm not a huge lemon person, but I don't mind lemon cake. I mean, I love Ma. Happy birthday. She's so awesome. Strawberry shortcake. I love strawberry shortcake. 
Not as much as I love Red Velvet Cake, but Strawberry Shortcake is super good. Texas Sheet Cake? Oh! Oh! Ember they ma! I realized I haven't been doing that all morning, so I gotta catch them up. So, I'm sorry, everybody. Black Forest Cake? Oh, shit. Um... What's the difference between a normal sheet cake and a Texas sheet cake? Is it just bigger because it's Texas? I mean, I'm just curious, naturally curious. Vicky, are you originally from Texas? Mm. You're so welcome. Hi, Karen. All right. Let's go with... What's the best birthday gift you've ever received? Mine, oof, it's tough. I've had a lot of great gifts growing up, but mine was probably like the first or second year me and Darcy were together. And I uh, had a friend who I played a video game with all the time or whatever. I'd always, you know, go over and hang out with him. And I came home from work one day, and she just, like, pulled a brand new PlayStation 3 out from behind her back. And I was like, holy shit, because we were broke as fuck. Like, we just first got together. You know, we'd only been together for a couple of years. And so we, so it was super astounding. I was blown away by it. And also, cheers, everybody. We'll do a little bit of music while we're hanging and... Chilling and chilling and hanging. And happy birthday, Mom. Oh my goodness, that sounds delicious. Masa's jewelry, what kind of jewelry? Or just all of the jewelry. Alright, see you when you back here. freaking phone here. You and Henny met when you fell and broke your arm on a sidewalk, and she was just a random person on the sidewalk and helped you into a car and took you to the hospital? That's crazy. That's so fucking awesome. Yeah, that it's so good. It sounds really good. That's crazy. Right? What are the odds? That's dope as shit. That's a hell of an awesome story. That's why I was like, no way. That's so cool. That's awesome. Penny, you're amazing. 37 years ago, a total stranger. That's fucking wild. Holy shit. Where were you, if you don't mind me asking? Was it a big city or a small rural area? Was it... Ma, were you like, who the fuck are you? Or Henny? That's so wild, you guys. Crazy. In Brooklyn. Wow. That's awesome. You've known Hank for 50 years. She introduced you to Ma, and we were together 35 years. Happy birthday, Ma! Oh, I'm going to have to restart the song, but I don't care, whatever.
Yes, she was surprised. <laughs> That's fucking great. Rissa! Okay, I think you can do it. Mm -hmm. Wait, make a cake for a dog. I think you could do it. Just make a big ass dog treat. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. That's dope, though. That's so cool. Fucking t fell and broke. Okay, how did you fall and break your arm? Hmm. Smoking too much ganja, ma. Was it your birthday? Was it your fucking birthday? Did you fall and break your arm? Oh, right? That's so good, Henny. That's awesome. Oh my goodness, that's a hell of a story. And I get it, working in kitchens and shit. Wet lettuce is no joke. Yep. So... That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I need to know more. So, like, where was y'all on your way? Like, Henny, were you doing something important? Or were you just out, like, chilling, just walking? And then this lady fell and broke her fucking arm. And you're like, holy shit, this lady broke her arm. Like, I need to know more. <laughs> this, is so, this is such a good story. This is, like, a movie. Just saying. I mean, I don't mean to make you guys type a bunch. I'm so sorry. So, I mean, you can make it short and sweet or whatever. Or you don't even have to answer them. I don't know. I'm just, that's just crazy. That's just fucking, I do. I'm like, oh my God. What is, like, that is amazing. That's so, you don't hear that every day. You don't, especially like, oh. And he was going to a small store next to the store. It was a car service, like a taxi service. I was going to the taxi service. So we were next door to one another and she saw me. What? That's crazy. Europe's like, fifth, plead the fifth. Don't answer any more questions. <laughs> I fucking love it. Happy birthday, Ma. That is a hell of an amazing story. That's crazy. Okay, so then, Henny, what are your thoughts? Were you just like, holy shit, this lady broke her fucking arm. And then, I suppose y'all didn't, you were taxiing. So, I mean, you didn't have car, your own vehicles. So, Rissa. Good morning. Are you catching any of this story? I'm so sorry. You say hi to everybody. I'm just blown away. This is amazing. Hi, everybody. No, I jumped out of the chat to come on here, so I missed the story. Okay, so I asked Henny, Ma and Henny, how they met. Henny and I met when I fell on my arm, or fell and broke my arm on the sidewalk, and she helped me into a car and took me to the hospital. So my next question is, there's no fucking way. That's crazy. A total stranger? He said, 37 years ago, a total stranger. That's awesome. That's so cool. That and then, cool. so, Ma, or CJ's known Henny for 50 years, and she introduced her to Ma, Ma and then they were together, they've been together for 25 years. So this all happened in Brooklyn. This is amazing. I'm just amazed by this. And then Ma, or Henny, she was the lucky one to have Ma on her path. I was like, that's so amazing. Happy birthday, Ma. That's so sweet. Happy birthday, Ma. And then it was raining, and she slipped on a piece of lettuce, which sounds silly, but that's a real <laughs> thing. I fucking get it. I mean, it's so real that it sounds fake. Right. It's like, fuck banana peels. Lettuce is the real shit you got to watch out for. Right. That's not joking. So then they were going to like stores next to each other. And then. Okay, here we go. Here's Henny's side of the story. And now this is all new information to me. So Henny was pregnant with her son. She was walking in front of her with her daughter when she fell and broke her arm. The car service. To the hospital and got her fixed up. Brother Boy, it's Ma's birthday. Happy birthday, Ma. Scroy, I hope you're having an incredible morning, my friend. And he says we've been friends ever since. That's awesome for you guys. I love that. That's amazing. My daughter's with me. She figured I needed an extra race so she didn't want my daughter to be alone. That's so cool. That's a hell of an amazing soul. And, like, yeah, that's incredible. Crazy shit happens. 
What up? What up? Okay. And now we at UBTV get blessed with all three of you. Yeah, no shit, right? That's amazing and so true. I fucking love hanging out with you. All of you. Ma, CJ, hanging. You guys are incredible. Scroy, you're Kay, Vicky, Karen, Rissa. <coughs> McCoy, when he's here, I don't think he's here this morning, which is okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you want to do 420 surprise birthday cake? Or do you want to do birthday cake 420 surprise? I want to call it a cake, but yes. <laughs> okay, so you want to smoke? Oh. Okay, my best friend, she taught me how to be a loving mother. I'll always be great for my son, too. Happy birthday, my Damn, that's amazing. Damn, right? Dude, there's so much. Like, I'm loving this story. Thank you, CJ. Thank you so much. Okay, so... We'll do 420 quick, so everybody get your bowls out. So we're smoking again for Ma's birthday. And then we'll do Happy Birthday. And then we'll do the Happy Birthday game. And then we'll do, well, there'll be a surprise in there somewhere or another. But, Ma, this one goes out to you. And Happy Birthday. It's a great party. How pretty. <coughs> yes, much love, Ma. <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying. <coughs> no, not nearly as amazing and beautiful as you, Ma. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. I'm so pretty. <laughs> so then it fits Ma pretty well then, I think. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Are you about ready, Rissa? You think we'll be ready to do this? I'm ready. I'm always ready. All right, everybody, sing along. Here we go. We have. Yeah. Oh. I upgraded my Oreo just for mods, double stuffed. <laughs> Yay. It was just a regular Oreo, but Ma is special, so she got double cream. Oh, you and you made it just in time to sing happy birthday. Are you ready? Yep. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Cookie cake, yay! All right, go ahead, Rissa. Hey, Ma, in three, two, one. Yay. Yay. Happy birthday. I loved, Mom. listen, I loved hearing you guys totally on a whole different key than each other. I just <laughs> had to, I just had to stop because I was like, well, I'm just making this worse. So I'll just <laughs> hold the cookie. <laughs> Because that was an amazing duet, Uni. I'll sing with you anytime. And uh, for everybody who enjoyed our lovely, amazing singing, I'm so sorry. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Go ahead, Uni. You, I'm just thank you. So good morning, Uni. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Morning, Ma. Happy birthday. Hi, Penny. CJK. Everybody. Hi. Hi, hi, Karen. I'm so happy. Hi, Scroy. You're pretty fucking yerp. Happy Guess birthday what? to Ma. My yerp bitty box is in Dirty Jersey. Dirty Jersey? Yeah. Hi, you mean? Why it went to fucking Jersey, I don't know. But it went to Jersey. So it should be here in a day. Maybe two. It <laughs> must have needed to do the gym tan and laundry. Yeah, dicks. <laughs> Why did it go to Jersey? That's past Pennsylvania. I don't know. I'll never understand. <laughs> here, uh, it's gonna be here soon, so I'm I'm excited about it. Sometimes I'll have my stuff in Ohio and then send it to Pittsburgh. Yeah, stupid. I'm like stupid. What? <laughs> I'm like why? Okay, so this is the pictures I've shown so far for Ma today. Okay. This yeah. Is the first one. <gasps> wow. I like the blue. I like the blue. Yes, yes, yes. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Okay, and then we did. I did this one. Ooh, look at that one. I like that one too. That one reminds me of um ah uh, shit. When Betty they Boop terrifying us? That's Betty what I was kind of going for. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I was thinking more along the lines I can't tell you because of the simple fact I can't remember the name of the movie. I'll have to ask Jason and then I'll get back to you. Okay. And then this <laughs> one is the one I just showed. Ooh, I love that one too. Yay. So, all right, everybody. It's time to play the first edition of the Happy Birthday game. So, we'll play it again this afternoon. But the record right now is 74. My mom holds the record with 74 Happy Birthdays in a minute. Can we beat my mom's record with Ma's new record? Mm, Can Ma fun. beat Ma? Can Ma ble beat Mom? There we go. So I'll get the timer up here. You and if you want to jump in the comments. Sarissa, you want to jump in the comments? Yep. Uh, yep, Ma, I'm already on it. Perfect. Ma, you can happy birthday yourself. Everybody just, you know, happy birthday, happy birthday, just one at a time. You know, make it count. Um, It's got to be fairish and be happy birthday-esque. But, um, yeah. Thank okay. you, Amy. They all fit Ma perfectly then, I think. Mm -hmm. Which is my opinion. Yeah. All right, so get the timer out here. Get one minute on the clock. All right. Let me hit the ball. Everybody get your balls ready. 
and take a hit quick. Eh, too many things at once. Ready? Okay. And go. Let's go, people. Happy birthdays. Let's get those happy birthdays in. Facebook's probably going to yell at you, and I'm sorry, but happy birthday, Ma. You're not spamming at all. I promise you, you're not. We love it. We want all the happy birthdays we can get. Let's go, Ma. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I'm gonna Come on, some- guys. Come on. 30 seconds left, everybody. Let's get those happy birthdays in. Holy shit, Ma, this is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be close. 20 seconds, everybody. Come on, get your fucking happy birthdays in. 15. I wish I was on a desktop right now. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Do, 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 do. All right. You need, I we need to stop. Perfect. Gotcha. Did. Perfect. Awesome. That's getting Thank there. You. Yep, you're good. No worries. I was going fast as my little fingers would go. And then uh, I always count the ones after, but the official number is between the stop and go. But uh, there's a fucking lot. All right. All right. Is, is the dab time first? Yes, yeah, so let's do dab time first because this is going to be a big number. This is going to be like the, the, the shit we learned yesterday. I didn't even finish my homework, you guys. Fuck. Oh, all right. You can copy mine. Okay. Well, I don't know. When you started throwing stuff. I say Mor- Morgan ate it. Yeah, there we go. Morgan ate it. Well, I don't know. Sure, Dab everybody. time. Dab time. Rissa. Oh, my God. Look how fucking adorable that is. At first, I didn't see it because it was nude. I just seen leaves. It needs a little more dirt. <laughs> but... There's the butt. That's like the most perfect butt ever. Thanks. <laughs> well, you can't use that excuse too. Shit. Now they're going to know that we're both in cahoots. All right. We'll figure it <laughs> out. After. All right. Well, Beans' is cat ate his and the dog ate yours. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Jeez, I got scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There it is. All right. So we do have one that snuck in right before the timer started. But then we have go. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, wait. 687, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. 5, 106, 107, 108. Yeah! Stop! 108! 108 in a minute! Okay, I gotta bust the calculator out quick. I gotta see what the average on that is. (laughs) It's math, beans. 
Jeez, okay. he's all about the math. Oh, mm -hmm. listen, if I would have been on a desktop, there would have been pr probably close to 200. So there's 1.8 happy birthdays a second. That's incredible. Okay, so then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So... The official number is 108, but 108 plus 14, 122 happy birthdays. 122. Two. I think that is highly appropriate, Ma. So, yes, that's all, incredible. Those are all really good numbers. A number one and a 22, those are like powerful numbers. So, like, happy birthday to you. Yes, that was crazy. So, we'll see if we can beat it again this afternoon. The number is 108. And you guys um, are amazing. Yeah, perfect. Copy and paste and just kept it going. That's, yeah, that's amazing, Vicky. There you go. That's, that's what I did. So, oh, well, you hold the new record, so we'll see. And that's going to be a fucking, I thought my mom's record was uh, was going to be hard to beat. <laughs> but that's, in, that's right. amazing. And I'm glad if anybody was going to beat my own mom's record, would, I'm glad it was you. So, no worries. <laughs> I love it. But I think I'm hoping this afternoon we can crush that number. I'm hoping for 150 this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it. Can totally do it. Um, also, did anybody get dinged by Facebook for spamming? I'm just curious. I didn't. I know no. sometimes when I'm doing the getting stoned words, if I do it too fast in a row, Facebook will be like, oh, you have to wait a second to comment you're spamming or whatever. But for the first time ever since I started meditation, YouTube actually blocked it in one territory weird yeah like well as long as it wasn't like oh they didn't anything. remove it like they didn't delete it or anything but they did block it from one territory from seeing it hearing okay. well hearing it all right okay no worries um it'll start we'll start it at like 4 30 we'll start the games at 4 30 so i mean even if you're just here for a minute or whatever and, and yep so no worries um on a side note Happy birthday, Ma. Uh, I'm just kidding, but no, on a serious side note, um, UB University in like a half hour, 25 minutes. Make sure you got your pens and pads and pencils and all that shit ready and all that or whatnot. So, whoop, whoop, I'm excited. We're going to learn about what about hemp today, and we'll also have a little small segment, I hope. So, the nice thing is, is like, we knew, we know what we're going into this week, so we'll be able to kind of just jump right into it from last week. So, we'll have more time for side shit but i do have a few things written down that some people have asked me about and i'll have uni probably talk more about those things but we'll cover the what's of hemp first and then once we get through that we'll do we'll be able to um you know ask you know go over questions and stuff like that so hmm. i'm excited <laughs> cj thank you cj thank you thank you yeah, she's actually one best. of the people that messaged me and asked me about having you teach more. Hi, Bernie. Uh -huh. Hi, Vern. And so um, I will be uh, definitely pulling stuff up and trying to. It'll, I think it'll go good. This, I mean, I think it went really good last time, last week. So. Oh, absolutely. Well, what I started to do, and I hope it's reaching people. I started making posts in the uh, on the UB page about cannabinols, the CB1, CB2 receptors, just yes. little bits, little snippets, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of information to prepare your brains for what I'm going to tell you. So it's not totally. Oh, oh shit. Bye, guys. <laughs> Should be back. Um, so it's not totally jarring, I guess. It, you're kind of primed for it. So now when I talk about it, you'll be like, oh, I can understand a little bit. You had a visual to it so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. I find it's very difficult at times to explain something verbally. I always have had an issue with that. Just like I can't read something and understand it. I have to physically see it or physically do it. If somebody is, um, you know, explaining something to me, give me a visual so I can understand and piece it together. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I hope it is um, conveying in the manner to which I'm trying to convey what I'm saying. <laughs> Perfect. Um, 
yes, so I'm excited for that. It should be it should be good. Yeah, it be good. it's gonna be real good. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, did you see this this morning? I zoomed toward the 420 song. Ooh. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I like it. It feels good. It's cool. Like that's bank. so cool. Yeah, I'm just like chilling, going through the loops. Yeah. If you're, oh shit, yeah, sorry, that's I totally, cool. yep. Yeah. You have UB University awesome. coming up in like 20 minutes, but yeah. That's okay, Vernie can take UB University too. Okay. Everybody needs to be learning this. Learning. So yes, learning is important. Yeah, this makes my brain happy. Oh yeah, oh, Vern, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. So we're celebrating my day. I need to push the goddamn happy birthday button. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. Ooh, you gummies gummy. for you. Yeah, yummy. Yummy gummies. Yummy gummies. Gummy 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 gummy. Hi, Vern. Oh. Here, wait. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Good morning. morning. I can put you in my earbud. You know the thing. Mm -hmm. So hmm. good morning. Good morning. How's it your day going? Bad, bad. It's better. Um, we got a message that school is only half day because of the severe weather in Florida right now. Oh, they damn. might close school early, which usually they say they're going to close school later, but they close school by noon or earlier. Mm. It's <laughs> quarter size hail, um, 10 inches of rain about to hit, and like all the fun stuff that my kids love. Oh, wow. I love That's it. Cool. It's so pretty. It's like Care Bears, but different. Right? Happy yeah. birthday, they... Happy birthday, Ma. When you yeah. talk about gummies. Gummies are so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about gummies, no problem. Right? You guys can ask the questions and I'll give you all the answers. We'll even cheat on the test. User, I'll give you all the answers to the test. <laughs> yes, and as a gummy user, I highly recommend anything uni sells. Yes, <laughs> that part. Because they're delicious. And it they helps. It does. It does the job, and that's what the important thing is. It does do the job. A lot better than anything else. You know, I gave the drops to Rich's mom, and she went three days without pain pills. That's awesome. It's phenomenal. So, I win. Days, yeah, I win. I mean, 100%. she crushed her vertebrae, two of them. So she's wow. hurting pretty good. Look at what Karen says. That's awesome, Karen. Yes. Not having any pain, not having any stress from being in pain, because let's be honest, having pain affects your entire life. Not just the fact you, you have pain, but your mood, the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you function. Pain <laughs> affects all of that, and it affects everybody around you because it yeah. affects you so much. So It, it gets contagious. Yeah, so if we can remove that, it's it just makes life better. It just makes it better. Right. And I'm hell, if it tastes amazing. Yes. Well, she's been putting it in her coffee, and I told her to put uh, some drops under your tongue, mm -hmm. put some in your coffee, do whatever you think will work better. When I told her coffee or drops under your tongue, she didn't hear the or. Oh, so she did both. And then she called me. I feel good. <laughs> good. But you do. <laughs> you got 60 milligrams in you. 60 yeah, milligrams she's like, I feel happy. good. And I don't mm -hmm. feel pain. I'm getting something done. I'm like, what are you doing? She was crocheting. Sweet. She hasn't crocheted in three years. And now she can sit down and crochet. And that's amazing because that gives her joy. That makes her happy. It does. And we want to foster better with the baby. those emotions. We want right, more. She's doing the books. grandma things. Amazing. She's enjoying so I, her I grandchildren. Feel, yes. She can pick up the baby again. 
Listen, that's quality of life right there. That's what right, matters. That's what I was telling her. I told her I prefer you taking the drops no matter the cost over taking those pills. Yeah, I agree. That's what I, I want. Be for like, I better have my drops. I better have my drops today or I'm going to have to have pain. And same mm -hmm. with my tooth. I'm going to mute yep. me because I'm going to make sure the kids are all up. Okay, Dal. Okay, Kay. Okay, Kay. A dog, a dog cake. Like a cake for dogs, not a dog-shaped cake. I mean, oh. like... Have you seen like the cakes where they cut them open and they look like they're real? And they have, like, red velvet cake in them? Oh, no, definitely not is that Is she kind making of the cake or having the cake made? Right. The lady is messaging Kay Bless about you. making a cake for a dog. Oh... Okay, now I understand. Well, she's messaging the lady about the dog cake. So right. it, it doesn't... Yeah, the lady messaged her earlier. So she's been messaging back and forth with this lady. She's right, but, but is Kay baking the cake? Well, it's just... Bless yeah, you. I mean, she's oh, she's okay. baked the dog cake of some sort, I think. I didn't know Kay made dog cakes. I just she know didn't she didn't know it either. <laughs> oh, this is new. Okay, is new. cool. I was just yeah, trying to go through and pull them up. Yeah, she's like, somebody asked me to make a, a dog cake. She's like, I've never done it, but I can probably do it. I just wanted to catch up in the in the conversation. No, you're good. I knew what was now going on. We're making ketchup. We're making. Is that what we're you making? Said? I make ketchup. That's I thought good. you said. I thought oh, you ketchup. said it was time to catch up. I thought I was, we were yeah, making ketchup. Trying I'm to like, catch up with the conversation because oh, I had no okay. idea if Kay was having a cake made for one of her dogs or if she was making a cake for a dog because I didn't know she was making cakes. And if she is, that's fucking phenomenal. I just that's, didn't know. Yeah, that's more pro product. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm so. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and still not adjusted. Me too. Hold on, I'm going to say something to the kids. It does interfere with your mood, your family, your friends, everything. Yeah, like literally everything. Tinctures and the gummies and the lotion, it all works synergistically. It all just makes it all better. It just, it does. Karen just took her drops. She'll be feeling good in about 10 minutes. No pain. She'll be feeling amazing. <laughs> That's what you'll be doing. Yep. Sorry, I caught one of the shirt. Oh, tincture I, tincture. Yep, the tincture and the lotion. I caught one of the kids with his shirt inside out and backwards. Uh, it's a little too early for this. Little cousin, did you find a shirt yet? I do lotion, tincture, gummies. All three of them is like the best combination. Let me add because back. We're having technical difficulties here. Oh, okay. I love you. Bye. Love you. Technical difficulties. When it's kids involved, always technical difficulties. It's okay. No stress. Yeah, the gummies are super awesome. Pulled a muscle, yep, and got relief. That's. I'm sorry that you pulled a muscle because I kind of was doing work outside and I kind of twisted my ankle a little bit. So I was feeling the same kind of from doing yard work, but it wasn't bad. It was just a twinge. I had just gotten a cut on one of the sticks there and I put a little of the lotion on. I was like, you know, I'm really happy I have that because if I would have walked on it, I would have aggravated it even more. And in a few days it would have been 10 times worse, little lotion and it kind of fixes it. So Yep, they took the tincture. They CJ and Ma take the tincture every single day. Karen needs to get gummies. Yeah, that and that's the thing. Once you see how well it all works together, like it it's just it's amazing to see that you can eat a gummy, put a little lotion on and take a little bit of a tincture and not have any pain when a doctor tells you to take all these pills but you still suffer and you get side effects. Oh, so so it doesn't fix the problem. It just gives you more problems. Amazing. That's just a great deal, isn't it? I, I don't think it's fair. I don't, I don't think it's fair at all. So 
it always makes me so happy to hear people feel much better. Yeah, of course. We we definitely need a joint or a bowl or a bong. <laughs> Something. But yes. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, wait, this one. Oh, that was nice of you, Kay. That's amazing. That's a trip. That's fucking Ooh. sweet. But I love them colors. That's yeah, I like the colors. That's cool. It's a it's kind of like puts you in a trance in a sense. It do. It makes my brain happy. Yes, very much so. It calms it. You want to go faster? Whoa. It's too fast. Slow down, Ma. Why'd we let you drive? <laughs> Happy birthday, Ma. CJ's like, this is why we don't let Ma drive. I told you guys. <laughs> you mean this, the small stick, like the little tiny ones, or my large one? I have two different ones. The ones that are in a chapstick tube, it's the same strength. Um, there's 6,000 milligrams in like a two ounce. So I just take that same recipe and I put it in small tubes. I think it comes out to about, um, oh man, you're probably getting about 800 milligrams each, 700, 800 milligrams each um, in, in that tiny little tube. So instead of the full 2,000 of each one, you're getting about, I don't know, 1,500 to 2,000, I guess it would be. In the large tube, the same one. There's 6,000 milligrams, Karen. They used to call Mom Mario Andretti. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> ah, that's funny. I'll I show you and these sticks are the roll on has 6,000 milligrams in it. And there's two ounces in this tin or two, whatever you want to call it. And then these like, it's like a, a tube. But, I pulled you up right when you looked down. Oh, they're all different. Three, four. I have yellow. And see, I have four different, oh, five on. different colors. I have five different colors, and each color is something different. So the blue one is literally only full spectrum. How much I does that one cost? They they're all different prices. Uh, okay. You have to check the website. I don't know them offhand. Um, the CBG is its own. The um, CBD is its own. And then I have one that's CBD and CBG only. And then another one that is um, my max strength. So this one has all of the cannabinols in it, plus the CBG, CBD. So it's full spectrum. Hemp. So it'd be like my max strength. Um, but they, they are about... I would say 1500 milligrams because like I said, it is the same recipe. It's just in a 0.5 of an ounce, half ounce instead of two. Yeah. Well, yeah, I only sell it in a two ounce tin. Maybe mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to think on you know what you can do, Karen? Before you rub that on, put it in your hands. Probably about a quarter to a half dollar size in your hands and melt it. Melt it really good. Okay, because 
you may not you may not have to use as much. I know for myself, if I scoop it out and just rub it, I'll just keep rubbing on until I'm completely saturated. But if you take it and you put it in your hands and you turn it into an oil first, it'll spread a lot easier. It'll penetrate a little further, I guess you could say. You might not have to use as much as what you're using is what I'm getting at. Not that I don't want to sell you more. I want you to stretch it as far as you can. So, but it, that's what I typically tell people. Don't just apply it to your skin. Put it in your hands and get it nice and hot and let it melt to an oil. And that oil spreads quite a distance. And you might be able to, you know, maybe use a little less than what you're using. I don't know. Use a small coating. Coat the area really nice. Give it a, a, a minute or two. And then if you need a little more, put a little bit more on. Oh, you're very welcome. So this lady wants a dog cake. She said, I can do what I want, adding treats, whatever. Help me with ideas, please. No better group to ask. Okay, I have an idea. Okay. So you could just do like a big treat and some sort of maybe peanut butter refrosting and then do happy birthday in dog treats, like spell that make the treats like say happy birthday, like the letters. And then dehydrate them and then put them in the peanut butter on the cake. I don't know how much, like how you want to, how, how much you want to get into it, but that's an idea. I'm going to take a look and see some inspiration here. Okay. We have UB University in five minutes. Everybody get your bowls and shit ready. Ooh, there we go. Oh, that's a cool one. That's a cool idea, Kay. Yeah, the, I like the, the bones around the cake, too. That's cool. Yeah. Aw. Here's another one. Oh, that's cool. With the, the collar, that's cool. You just have to figure out what you could use for a frosting, I guess. I don't know. I mean... They make... Um... All different types of recipes. Do you have Pinterest, Kay? If you do, go on Pinterest because I find everything there. And it has some amazing ideas. Um, and oh, that's cool. all the recipes and everything you could need. Or, yeah, so, you could do like a cookie, like a two treats and then a filling and then smash it and then frost it maybe. That'd be yeah, cool. you could do that, or you could do, this is a little tiny, you know, a smaller one. That's a muffin in the center. Uh, muffin a, in the center. A puppy muffin. Puppy muffin. Um, but those are some ideas. The dog looks thrilled about it. Look, he's happy. Oh. He's happy, Doggo, so, I mean... Doggo approved and stuff. Let's see if there's another style here that might be um, just to give you something different. There's some recipes, Kay. If you don't have Pinterest, I'd be more than happy to take a few of these and send them to you. Hey, Kay, did you know today's Ma's birthday? Yes, it is. You need, you do want to see another Ma picture? Yeah. Okay, we'll do. All right, we'll do this one. Ready? Yes. <gasps> I love it. That one's gorgeous. Come on. All right. So how about something? Hi, Jason. Um, good morning. Good morning. Maybe uh, a cake, like a, a muffin, a quick muffin, icing on it. <coughs> and then uh, some of your treats on top. Happy birthday, Ma. Yeah. Happy birthday, Ma. All 
Okay, everybody get your hemp C books out. DJ says carrot cake base. Carrot cake base. There you go. They go carrot cake's good. Yay, yeah. our hemp book. We'll do a smoke song. And uh, we'll do a quick smoke song. And then we'll do uh, UB University. Very cool, Kay. And you're quite welcome. Yes, absolutely. We'll do... Yeah, man. <laughs> There's a puppy. <laughs> I love the heart. I like this one, but I prefer that he <laughs> leaves it blue and purple. Yeah, I like the. I just popping around different ones. Oh, there's green. The green's nice. The green's nice. Green for Europity. Green for Europity. Oh, we should have green and blue. Oh. Ooh. Okay. You be university. Yay! Okay, just finishing it up here. You're pretty fucking Europe. Pretty fucking Europe, exactly. 
you're pretty fucking your next year don't ever print a label on april 1st Ooh. because april fool's day they fool you <laughs> they fuck about with your package <laughs> but at least it's on its way and um i think i did challenge the universe last week that i said that i would be patient enough until thursday if somebody else ordered a yerpity box that i would wait and open it on Thursday. So the universe was just making me stick to my word, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So, but um, Karen and I are opening them friggin' boxes tomorrow. <laughs> the universe didn't, it's always listening. Always, always listening. So it hears us. So we're millionaires now because we said so. <clears throat> right. Bet. <laughs> Bet, universe. Come on now. Prove me wrong. <laughs> okay, one second. Just got to get it finished ready here. It's almost ready. Beans are so bright today. I try. I like it. Yes, we are, Karen. Damn it, yes, we are. <laughs> Can't wait for my box to get here. Okay. Exciting. Let me go in a little more. All right, here we go, everybody. Hello and welcome to the second week of UB University. Thank you all for joining us again as we continue our exploration into the fascinating world of hemp. Last week, we delved into the who of hemp, uncovering the historical figures whose contributions have significantly shaped our understanding and utilization of this remarkable plant. This week, we pivot our focus to the what of hemp, the myriad products derived from this versatile crop and the benefits they offer. Hemp's uses are as diverse as they are impressive, spanning from traditional textiles to modern innovations in biodegradable materials and sustainable products. We'll explore how hemp has been transformed into clothing, construction materials like hempcrete, nutritious food products, eco-friendly paper, and even cutting edge bioplastics. Each of these applications not only demonstrates hemp's versatility, but also underscores its potential to contribute to a more sustainable and health conscious world. As we dive into the various products made from hemp, we'll also examine the environmental and health benefits associated with each. From hemp's role in reducing our carbon footprint to its nutritional value and therapeutic properties, we'll see how this plant can play a crucial part in addressing some of today's most pressing challenges. I encourage you to engage actively in our discussions, bringing your curiosity and insights to the table. Together, we'll uncover the vast potential of hemp and envision how it can shape a better future. Welcome to this week's journey through the what of hemp. Let's embark on this informative exploration together. Yay. So, all right, everybody, if you want to take notes and whatnot, we will be doing what? And then um, we should be able to blast through this pretty quickly. I've got it all ready. And then we'll dive into more. We'll do all the questions. We'll talk about um, different stuff. And then Muni can kind of go through some of her products and why she uses some different things based on the what, of, you know, kind of tags into what we've been, what we discussed through the section. So, is cool. ready? Okay. Yes. All right. One second, I just have to let the dogs back in quick. Sounds good. <coughs> so I'll let you guys decide which product do you want me to talk about first? Gummies, hard candy, lollipops, the lotion, uh, tinctures, deodorant, magnesium spray, tato butter. You guys mull it around in your brains and let me know. Okay.
Here we go. As we delve into the what of hemp this week, we're uncovering a world of possibilities that stretch across various sectors, from industrial applications to medical innovations and beyond. Hemp's versatility is not just a testament to its adaptability, but also to its potential to revolutionize how we approach sustainability, health, and technology. Let's explore a handful of these applications spanning different aspects of our modern world. Industrial uses, hempcrete and bioplastics. In the realm of construction, hempcrete emerges as a standout material. Composed of hemp herds and lime, hempcrete is not only lightweight and insulating, but also carbon negative, actively capturing CO2 as it cures. This positions hempcrete as a game changer in sustainable building practices, promising a greener approach to construction. Moving into the sphere of material science, hemp-based bioplastics represent a critical shift towards reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. These biodegradable materials derived from hemp cellulose offer a sustainable alternative for everything from packaging to auto parts. Hemp bioplastics could significantly decrease pollution, presenting a forward-thinking solution to one of our most pressing environmental challenges. Textile applications, clothing and fabrics. Hemp fibers have been used to create textiles for thousands of years, valued for their durability, breathability, and environmental benefits. Compared to cotton, hemp requires less water, no pesticides, and yields significantly more fiber per acre. The resurgence of hemp in fashion and textiles speaks to a growing demand for sustainable clothing options, marrying ancient wisdom with modern eco-consciousness. Nutritional products, hemp seeds and oil. In the realm of nutrition, hemp seeds and hemp oil offer a powerhouse of health benefits. Rich in essential fatty acids, proteins, and minerals, these hemp products contribute to heart health, reduce inflammation, and support overall well-being. Their versatility in culinary applications, from smoothies to salads, makes them a valuable addition to a healthy diet. Medical innovations, CBD and therapeutic applications. Perhaps one of the most rapidly advancing areas of hemp research lies in its medical applications, particularly CBD, cannabidiol. Unlike THC, CBD does not produce psychoactive effects, making it an appealing option for addressing a wide range of conditions, including anxiety, pain, and seizures. The therapeutic potential of CBD and other cannabinoids is a vibrant area of research, promising new avenues for treatment that are rooted in one of the world's oldest cultivated plants. Environmental impact, carbon sequestration and biodiversity. Beyond its direct uses, hemp plays a crucial role in environmental sustainability its rapid growth and dense planting can improve soil health, prevent erosion, and support biodiversity. Moreover, hemp's ability to sequester carbon dioxide during its growth cycle makes it a valuable ally in the fight against climate change. As we explore these diverse applications of hemp, from industrial uses to medical breakthroughs, it's clear that this plant holds the potential to make significant contributions across a broad spectrum of fields. Its versatility not only showcases the innovation possible with natural resources, but also underscores the importance of sustainable practices in shaping a healthier, more resilient future. This overview barely scratches the surface of what hemp can do. As we continue our exploration, I encourage you to think critically about the implications of each application, not just for our immediate needs, but for the legacy we leave for future generations. I'm excited. I saw you all didn't see it, but I saw Uni's face light up when it started talking about the CBD and the this yeah. She I she was like, oh my god. She was she did a backflip. You should have saw it. I wish you guys would have seen it. <laughs> it was good. It was good. So yes, we will probably talk more about the medical, you know, we'll dive more into that when we get to that section, but we'll dive into the industrial uses is, is first. So I'm gonna grab that section quick. Is it the size good for everybody? Can everybody read it? Um, um size is perfect. Hey, that's what she said. I was waiting for it. <laughs> One size fits all, I guess. Right. 
That's All right, so this first section we'll dive into the industrial uses of hemp. So we'll just kind of go through each section that they just kind of talked about. And so feel free to take notes or anything. If anybody has any questions, we can kind of answer them. I just don't like to pause or whatever the segment. So we'll just do, you know, each segment, whatever we can do questions or whatever. But so here we go with industrial. You get ready? I'm ready. Oh, no, you're good. All right. Here we go, everybody. In today's session, we're honing in on the industrial uses of hemp, an area that showcases the plant's remarkable versatility and its potential to revolutionize industries with sustainable alternatives. Hemp's journey from a stigmatized plant to a beacon of green innovation underscores its capacity to contribute to a more sustainable and environmentally friendly industrial future. Let's delve deeper into two key industrial applications, hempcrete and bioplastics. Hempcrete a sustainable building material. Hempcrete is a composite material made from the inner woody fibers of the hemp plant mixed with lime and water. It's not just any building material, it's a sustainable powerhouse. Hempcrete's environmental credentials are impressive. It is carbon negative, meaning it absorbs more CO2 during its growth and use than is emitted during its production and application. This feature is crucial in the fight against climate change, making hempcrete an attractive option for eco-conscious construction projects. Moreover, hempcrete provides excellent insulation, is lightweight, and offers moisture regulating properties, creating buildings that are not only energy efficient, but also comfortable and healthy to live in. Its use in construction demonstrates how traditional materials can be replaced with more sustainable plant-based alternatives. Bioplastics, reducing reliance on fossil fuels, the second industrial revolution hemp is contributing to is in the creation of bioplastics. Derived from the cellulose found in hemp plants, hemp bioplastics offer a biodegradable solution to the world's plastic problem. Unlike traditional plastics, which can take hundreds of years to decompose and are derived from non-renewable petroleum, hemp bioplastics break down more quickly and are made from a renewable resource. Hemp bioplastics can be used in a variety of applications, from packaging to car parts, offering a way to reduce our carbon footprint and reliance on fossil fuels. This innovation not only addresses the urgent need for sustainable materials, but also opens up new markets and opportunities for the hemp industry. Implications for the future. The industrial uses of hemp in creating sustainable building materials and biodegradable plastics represent just the tip of the iceberg. As we continue to push the boundaries of what's possible with hemp, we're likely to see even more innovative applications emerge, further solidifying hemp's role in a sustainable industrial future. These examples highlight the critical role that hemp can play in our transition to a more sustainable economy. By embracing hemp's potential, industries can reduce their environmental impact, <clears throat> contribute to a circular economy, and pave the way for a greener, more sustainable future. As we explore these industrial applications of hemp, Consider the broader implications for sustainability, the environment, and how we might continue to innovate with hemp in the years to come. Okay, let's do a fun little game quick about industrial hemp. So we'll put, I don't know, like a minute on the clock. Oop, I didn't think it was gonna be that big. That's what she said. <laughs> and um, we'll do as many hemp derived materials that you can think of like hempcrete shirts car parts i don't give a shit we'll see i mean hemp can be made from anything so like or hemp can be made into anything so i don't know fuck it ready go so i'm gonna go with lotions mm, shoes Rope, that's a good one. Um, roofs. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, you got me on that one. Link Holmes Fuels, that's a good one. Foods is a good one. 
15 seconds ish left now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Oh, we can hear the sound effect now. Every <laughs> time it says it says okay. That's what it means. That's what it does. Okay. So we got some good ones, I think, here. Awesome. So I said lotions. Yeah. You make, yep. Rope, of course. Mm-hmm. Bags. Moss has any more material. That's right. And it's Moss's birthday, so she gets double credit for that. She Teacher do. says so. <clears throat> yeah. Uni says shirts. I said shoes. We were clothed good on the same wavelength there. <laughs> Ooh, oils. I think you could probably make roofs out of hemp. Yes, you can. Building material. Parts. Yeah. I was literally typing car interiors, and Mom put that one. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> Building homes. Yep. Fuels, not to be confused with oils, because it's different oils. Right, biofuels. Yep. Biofuels. For your vehicle. Right. And foods. Your home. Yeah. You can and then spoons mm -hmm. to eat said foods with. Yes. And paper plates, paper. probably. And towels. Ooh, table, tableware, right? Yeah, there it is. And Tables. cups. And ropes. Yeah, and double points for ropes, because two people said it. And... Yeah. Another extra double points to Ma because it's your birthday. Teacher said yeah. so. Teacher said so. Mm -hmm. we, All we, right. No, cool. We just follow the rules. We don't make. No, we don't. I don't know. All right. Let's go with. Now we're gonna do textiles. So let me grab this one. Ooh, Ooh textiles now. Okay. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, there it is. Okay. I was like, there's nothing there. <laughs> What's happening? It's, it's my it's, birthday. That's happening. It is, it is my birthday. Okay. Everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Today, we turn our focus to one of the oldest and most enduring uses of hemp, textiles. This sector beautifully illustrates hemp's versatility and its resurgence as a material of choice in the sustainable fashion industry. The journey of hemp from field to fabric encapsulates a story of environmental responsibility, innovation, and the rediscovery of a textile that once clothed nations. Let's explore the world of hemp textiles and their significance in today's fashion landscape. Hemp textiles, a tradition of sustainability. Hemp textiles are made from the fibers of the hemp plant, cannabis sativa. Historically, hemp was a staple in the production of sailcloth, ropes, and even the canvas used by artists. Its durability and resistance to mold, mildew, and ultraviolet light made it invaluable. Today, these same qualities, along with hemp's minimal environmental footprint, are driving its popularity in the sustainable fashion industry. Environmental benefits. Hemp cultivation is notably low impact. It requires significantly less water and no pesticides compared to conventional cotton. Moreover, hemp's rapid growth cycle and dense planting can improve soil health, prevent erosion, and even sequester carbon from the atmosphere, making it a champion crop for sustainability. In the textile industry, these environmental advantages translate into clothing and fabrics that are not only durable and comfortable, but also carry a much lower ecological footprint. Hemp fabric is breathable, absorbs moisture well, and becomes softer with each wash, enhancing its appeal to consumers looking for quality and sustainability. The future of fashion. The resurgence of hemp in textiles is part of a broader movement towards sustainable and ethical fashion. Designers and brands are increasingly turning to hemp as they seek to reduce their environmental impact and meet consumer demand for eco-friendly products. This trend is supported by innovations in textile processing making hemp fabrics softer and more versatile, suitable for a wide range of clothing and accessories. Implications for the industry. The adoption of hemp textiles signifies a shift in the fashion industry towards more sustainable practices. It challenges traditional production methods and opens up new possibilities for reducing waste, conserving water, and minimizing chemical use. As the sector continues to evolve, Hemp stands out as a material that not only benefits the environment, but also offers economic opportunities for farmers and manufacturers alike. In summary, 
Hemp Textiles represent a convergence of tradition and innovation, offering a sustainable solution to some of the fashion industry's most pressing environmental challenges. As we explore the potential of hemp in textiles, we're reminded of the broader implications for sustainability, the global economy, and our responsibility to the planet. The story of hemp in textiles is far from over. It's being woven into the future of sustainable fashion, promising a greener, more conscious approach to the clothes we wear. There you go. I, uh, I think that it's crazy that like you, I mean, so I know that we talked about the industrial shit, but like, why doesn't everybody just wear hemp clothes? I mean, like, it's just silly. They should be, but they didn't because that industry wasn't what the founding fathers is what, that's not what they were into and they needed control over the people. So they had to make it illegal because that was control. And then they could run with all of the cotton for the slaving uh, trade and all of that. It supported their agenda. That's why they didn't do it. And not only that, if they cultivated hemp, then they wouldn't have the um, ramifications of using all of the trees and cutting them down for the logging industry and then so on and so on. So, hemp would have it, it it will literally transform the planet once it becomes um widely accepted and used and and everything else but right now see there's so many of these big companies and corporations that pump out this clothing like crazy that doesn't really do us any good uh and it's hard on the on the economy in so many ways to get you know all of the different types of material for to make one t-shirt, you know, cause it's not just cotton. They use all different kinds of things. So there's a million other companies involved with hemp. You just process it and spin it out. Like you do cotton and create the clothing simple, you know, but oh, here we go. Here's this. I got a video. This is a, yeah. a dude's fashion show. Awesome. For when it's all hemp clothes in Milan. Awesome. Beautiful. Look at that. Yep, beautiful. That's balling. Look, I like the yellow. Yep. Oh yeah, hemp. It colors beautifully. It Damn, look nice. at that. Yep, it's soft. Yep, it will literally change the earth. You're right, Ma. It's exactly what it would have done. But we're changing that. We're gonna fix it. Oh, look at the leopard print. Yeah. Oh, look at the flannel. Oh, yeah. Those are sweet. I mean, they're kind of crazy looking, but I mean, like, there's normal can, stuff I would wear. Like, look at those. Can, That's normal. I like the and, blue. And this is literally fashion fashion. So, this is like real fashion. Yeah, oh. you can turn hemp into anything. Look at that. That's a nice yeah. suit. Look how nice oh. it colors. I keep like, thinking it's done and it's not. That's a nice trench coat. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like that. The colors. Right. Yeah, I guess everything that they were wearing is made of hemp. Maybe not the glasses. I don't know. But maybe. it's a possibility that the glasses were too. Right. At least that's what they says. I don't know. I wasn't there. I missed that one. <laughs> wasn't there for that one. Wasn't yeah, about. I'm sorry. He was too busy doing newbie TV things. I was trying, but I missed the flight. And it was a long story. Yeah, it happens. Tato has decided that it's a shit day out and she's staying in bed. Yeah. Um, the post dogs just passed out, which is a nice day out, but they're just like, meh. It's mis Well, I mean, it's not miserable, but it's not exactly nice. It's real cloudy and it was raining this morning. Well, uh, cheers, everybody. We missed 420, but it's fine. Smoke weed every day. Happy birthday, Ma. Happy birthday, Ma. All right. Let me just grab this, make sure that stopped, that stopped. OK. 
Okay. <coughs> Hope everybody's having an amazing hump day. <coughs> it is an amazing hump day. It's Ma's birthday. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Just want to thank birthday. everybody. <coughs> Real quick before we start the next section. Yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Now we are on to the hemp and health and well-being. The nutritional. There it is. The nutritional benefits. Okay. Very good for you. Here we go. As we continue our exploration of the diverse applications of hemp, today's focus shifts to an area that directly impacts our health and well-being. Nutritional products derived from hemp. The seeds of the hemp plant in particular are a treasure trove of nutritional benefits, offering a rich source of protein, essential fatty acids, and various minerals. Let's delve into the world of hemp-based nutritional products and understand why they are gaining popularity in health and wellness circles. Hemp seeds, a superfood. Hemp seeds, sometimes called hemp hearts when shelled, are renowned for their nutritional profile. They are an excellent source of complete protein containing all nine essential amino acids, which are crucial for muscle growth, repair, and overall health. This makes hemp seeds an ideal protein source, especially for vegetarians and vegans. Essential fatty acids. One of the most celebrated aspects of hemp seeds is their optimal ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids, which is around 3-1. This balance is considered ideal for human health, contributing to heart health, reducing inflammation, and supporting brain function. The presence of gamma-linolenic acid, GLA, in hemp seeds also offers anti-inflammatory benefits, which can help with a range of health issues from arthritis to cardiovascular diseases. Minerals and antioxidants. Hemp seeds are packed with a variety of minerals, including magnesium, potassium, and iron, all of which play vital roles in our body's metabolic processes. They are also a good source of antioxidants like vitamin E, which protect our cells from oxidative stress and inflammation. Hemp oil, nutritional and culinary uses. Extracted from the seeds, hemp oil is another valuable product, rich in the same essential fatty acids found in the seeds. Its nutty flavor makes it a versatile ingredient in cooking, suitable for dressings, dips, and as a finishing oil. However, it's important to note that hemp oil has a low smoke point, making it unsuitable for frying. Incorporating hemp into the diet, the versatility of hemp seeds and hemp oil means they can be easily incorporated into daily meals. From sprinkling hemp seeds on salads and yogurts to using hemp oil in smoothies and salad dressings, there are numerous ways to enjoy the nutritional benefits of hemp. Implications for health and wellness. The rise in popularity of hemp-based nutritional products reflects a growing awareness of the importance of plant-based nutrition and sustainable food sources. Hemp's nutritional profile aligns with contemporary dietary trends, focusing on whole foods, plant-based proteins, and healthy fats. In conclusion, hemp's contribution to the nutritional sector offers more than just health benefits. It represents a shift towards more sustainable and health-conscious eating habits. As we continue to discover and embrace the nutritional potential of hemp, we not only nourish our bodies, but also contribute to a more sustainable food system. Hemp's role in nutrition is a testament to its versatility, its potential to support both our health and the health of our planet. So you, you know way more about the, the hemp seed health benefit deal than I do. So I'll kind of let you talk on that for a minute. I eat them. <laughs> I eat hemp seeds and I feed them to my pets. Um, it's it, They're good. They taste amazing. They have a really nutty flavor. And um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So they have a really nutty flavor and you can incorporate them into just about anything. You just want to make sure that you get a reliable source if you're going to buy them. I do get it from a, a natural organic company. Um, it's actually through Amazon, but, um, I buy it through my business account and I get a nice little deal on it. Not that I save too much money, but I buy it in bulk. So, cause I, like I said, I do feed it to my animals. 
but it's definitely something that if you do eat um, a plant-based diet is something that you can think about eating, or even if you don't eat a plant-based diet, you can still think about incorporating it, but it does have all of the fatty acids and proteins that you need. Go ahead, Beans. Um, doesn't Brooke feed her chickens hemp seeds? She does. Yep. She does give her, her chickens hemp seeds because it helps with egg production and it keeps them really happy. It keeps their digestive system very clean and and moving the way it should. So um, it's very beneficial to any animal, to any any being that eats food. Um, it's definitely something that more people are starting to realize that it has amazing benefits and it's really nice to see. Um, it's definitely not something that um, that is hard to find either. I mean, you could probably even find it in your local grocery store, like Wegmans or something like that, that have like a an organic section of, you know, maybe even gluten-free, things like that, because that's like health style. So, I mean, you might be able to find it in one of those places. Um, if not, I'll send you the link to what you, one I buy and you can buy that one. I mean, it's not that expensive and you, you don't need a whole lot of it. Um, but on a, on a whole, I think it's something that you should incorporate along with um, tinctures and lotions and gummies and all of the rest of the things to give you full body health. Because even though you're getting proteins and omega acid, omega threes and stuff like that, there's more to body health besides those things. So um, it's just an added benefit of putting more hemp into your life, your clothing, your food, your medicine, all of those things. Just go hemp, all the hemp. All Build your house out of the hemp. Just use it all. <laughs> yeah, and the next section here is the medical. So I'll You're give you some time CJ. on that one too, Uni. So okay, perfect, perfect. All I got right. them ready. Yay! Yes. Okay. Is It'll everybody be a ready for me? This is gonna be Uni's favorite part. I already know. All right, here we go, everybody. Today, we venture into one of the most promising and rapidly evolving fields of hemp application, medical innovations. The therapeutic potential of hemp, particularly through its cannabinoid content like CBD, cannabidiol, is a focal point of modern medical research. This exploration not only redefines our understanding of hemp beyond its industrial and nutritional uses, but also opens the door to groundbreaking treatments for a variety of health conditions. Let's delve into the medical innovations stemming from hemp and how they're shaping the future of healthcare. Cannabidiol, CBD, a therapeutic marvel. CBD has emerged as a compound of significant interest in the medical community, primarily due to its therapeutic properties without the psychoactive effects associated with THC. Research and clinical studies have begun to unveil the potential of CBD in managing a wide array of conditions, including anxiety, chronic pain, epilepsy, and even some symptoms related to cancer. Pain management. One of the most celebrated medical uses of CBD from hemp is its effectiveness in pain management. Unlike traditional painkillers, which can have significant side effects and potential for addiction, CBD offers a natural alternative it works by interacting with the body's endocannabinoid system, potentially reducing inflammation and altering pain perception. Mental health applications. CBD's potential benefits extend to mental health, where it's being studied for its effects on anxiety and depression. Preliminary studies suggest that CBD may help reduce anxiety levels and improve sleep patterns, making it a promising adjunctive treatment for various mental health conditions. Neurological disorders. Perhaps one of the most significant medical breakthroughs related to hemp-derived CBD is its use in treating epilepsy. Specifically rare and severe forms such as Dreve and Lennox-Gastaut syndromes. The FDA's approval of Epidiolex, a CBD-based medication, marks a milestone in cannabis-derived treatments, offering hope to patients with limited treatment options. Anti-inflammatory properties. Beyond these applications, Hemp's anti-inflammatory properties are being explored for their potential in treating a wide range of inflammatory conditions, from arthritis to cardiovascular diseases. This aspect of hemp's medicinal value underscores its potential as a versatile therapeutic agent. The future of medical hemp. 
As research into hemp and its compounds deepens, we stand on the brink of new medical innovations that could revolutionize how we treat a wide array of diseases and conditions. The ongoing legalization and destigmatization of hemp play a critical role in facilitating this research, promising a future where hemp-derived medications are a mainstream part of healthcare. In conclusion, the medical innovations emerging from hemp research represent a confluence of ancient wisdom and modern science. As we continue to explore and understand the full spectrum of hemp's therapeutic potential, we are not only expanding our medical toolkit, but also embracing more natural, holistic approaches to health and wellness. Hemp's journey in the realm of medical innovations is just beginning, and its full impact on healthcare is yet to be realized. Yes. So exciting. I love it. Yes, I know. Okay. Go ahead, Yuni. So all right, so I will start out by saying I am not a doctor. I cannot give you medical advice. I am not telling you to treat or th that this treats or cures any disease in any way, shape, or form. The FDA does not approve, nor have they studied the effectiveness of what I'm telling you. So knowing all of that, <laughs> I can tell you the information that I have through my own knowledge, my own experience, through other people's knowledge and experience and testimony from other people that have certain experiences with different cannabinoids for different situations. I can give you that, but that's all I can give you. So with that being said, cannabide at all is, or however they wanna say it, cannabit at all or whatever, but um, it's pronounced a million different ways, I suppose, but CBD is really good. Uh, it's really good for sleep. It's really good for anxiety. It's really good for de uh, de antidepressant. It's really good for epilepsy. However, um, some people, when they take CBD for anxiety, it can actually cause anxiety in some people and it can make it worse in others at times. Does this mean that you will have that situation? I don't know that for sure. I can't tell you that. But what I do is if somebody comes to me and says they have anxiety, I would never tell them to take CBD first. I would tell them to take CBG first because there is no way that they can experience an, um, <coughs> an abundance of anxiety, nor will it ever cause anxiety because it doesn't work the same way as CBD does in the system. So CBG is the only cannabinol in within the 128 in hemp that actually stops it before it starts, but it's the only one that will melt it away within minutes if you're in a situation where you are highly anxious and you can't seem to get rid of it. Um, CBD is also really good if you have a pet that has seizures. Uh, Kay will tell you that. She gives her dog um, my CBD tincture and she also gives her dog my CBG tincture. Um, CBG is the, is really good, like I said, for anxiety, but it's also good for anti-inflammatory properties to relax the muscles. So in a situation where you have seizures, it, your muscles get really tense and everything else. So it, it helps just relax the system a little bit better, the nervous system, which that's where seizures usually come from the brain. So if we can keep the nervous system calm, uh, you know, it, it typically won't cause an issue. Um, that being said, there's a few different ways of getting it into your system. I have topicals, I have gummies, I have tinctures, and they all do something a little bit different. Between the gummies and the hard candy, there's a different absorption rate. Between the tinctures and the, the candies, different absorption rate. So most people will tell you that, um, you know, a tincture is the best, but it might only be the best for them. A gummy may be the best thing in the world but it may only be the best for them. Everybody's system is different and everybody has a different amount of cannabinols within their system presently. So if somebody takes a gummy and they say it works the best thing on the planet for me, this other person may take the gummy and be like, well, it wasn't enough because you may need more of that cannabinol to reach the level of homeostasis in your system. So a tincture may be better for you. So you kind of have to play with it a little bit uh, whether it's a gummy, a tincture, or a piece of candy. But um, there's always a combination that you can find that will work. And everybody in the comments will say the same thing, I'm sure, that they have found relief with one, two, three, or all four of those products. Um, and it's, it's all dependent on the person. 
But um, I think I think everybody needs to be aware that you have an endocannabinoid system and you're born with it. it it's something built right into your body. It's created by creator and the plant, uh, hemp and cannabis were put here on this planet so that you could heal yourself. And if you knew that, then you wouldn't be pumping money into the healthcare system. Um, and, and that's the thing, there's no more health in healthcare. It's all about pills and making money. And I mean, we all need to make money, but I don't think people should suffer for that. So that's why I created the products that I did because I feel that you deserve to be healthy, happy, and doing what you love to do, not being miserable because you're in pain and suffering and everything else. And I think the world would be a lot better place, at least 10%, if we can remove at least health, um, not health, if we can remove pain from healthcare. Because let's be honest, when you go to a doctor and you tell them that you have pain, what are they gonna do? Throw you on meds and try this med and try that med. And it, let's just try a couple cannabinols and have no problem. How about that? But we're getting there, right? We're getting there. So I think um, if you guys are looking for any kind of specific relief, just reach out to me and I can help you formulate um, a plan to get the best health that you can out of your gummies and your candy and your tinctures and lotion. Um, Ma will tell you, CJ will tell you, Kay and Karen, they can all, Beans can tell you, literally anybody involved in this show can show you and tell you about the products they use and the benefits. So and I'll you put your, just reach your out. store link here, right there, Soul. Awesome. There we go. All right. One second here and we'll get the next segment up. If you guys um, have any questions, you can drop them here and we can go over them for you, you know, in the next little break segment here. Oh yeah, absolutely. We are going, we're cruising right along. So I'm very we're happy. Doing good. Yeah. I'm very happy with the pack, the pace we're going at. So we're if we have fun. any questions, we'll have plenty of time to, to answer them and all that good shit. So, and we're learning stuff. And we are learning. This is, this is cool. I mean, some of it's, you know, like, oh, I think I knew that. But then some of it's like, well, that's cool. I fucking didn't really know, you know, that. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it builds on it so that you get a little bit more. It's easily absorbed, I think, this way. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Karen said she feels better now with just the tincture. Yes. And, and oh, absolutely. Some, some people um, can get the maximum relief out of that, you know. And I'm just... I'm grateful that you're using it and getting relief. That's that's all that matters. All right. So now we are going to go on to the environmental impact section. Yay. Turn your books to page 420. <laughs> 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 oh, and cheers, everybody. Hope everybody's having an amazing Wednesday. It's my birthday. It Happy is birthday, my birthday. birthday. As we conclude our series of deep dives into the multifaceted world of hemp, it's essential to turn our attention to one of the most critical aspects of any agricultural or industrial activity, the environmental impact. Hemp stands out not merely for its versatility across various sectors, but also for its significant positive impact on the environment. Today, let's explore how hemp cultivation and its widespread adoption can contribute to environmental sustainability, a subject of paramount importance in our ongoing battle against climate change and ecological degradation. Carbon sequestration. One of hemp's most notable environmental benefits is its ability to sequester carbon. Hemp plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during their growth, effectively reducing the amount of this greenhouse gas which is a major contributor to climate change. This process makes hemp cultivation a carbon negative activity, meaning it removes more CO2 from the atmosphere than it emits during production and processing. Soil health and biodiversity. Hemp plays a vital role in soil health. Its deep root system prevents soil erosion, promotes aeration, and can even break up compacted soil, making it better for future crops. Moreover, hemp can be grown without the use of pesticides and herbicides which not only reduces water and soil pollution, but also supports greater biodiversity in agricultural areas. By fostering a healthier ecosystem, hemp cultivation contributes to the maintenance and enhancement of biological diversity. 
water usage. Compared to many other crops, hemp requires significantly less water, making it an ideal choice for cultivation in areas prone to drought or where water resources are scarce. This characteristic addresses one of the major environmental challenges of agricultural production, especially in the context of increasing water scarcity globally. Sustainable alternative to unsustainable raw materials. Hemp offers sustainable alternatives to more environmentally damaging raw materials. Hemp-based products, such as hempcrete in construction, bioplastics, and hemp paper, provide eco-friendly options that reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, decrease deforestation rates, and lower pollution levels associated with production and disposal of traditional materials. The role of hemp in a circular economy. Hemp exemplifies the principles of a circular economy, a system aimed at eliminating waste and the continual use of resources. Hemp's rapid growth cycle, coupled with its wide range of applications, from textiles to biofuels, allows for a more sustainable and efficient use of resources. By integrating hemp into various industries, we can move closer to a circular economy that supports sustainability and resource conservation. Conclusion. In summary, the environmental impact of hemp is profoundly positive. Its cultivation and use offer a beacon of hope for more sustainable agricultural and industrial practices. As we strive for a balance between human activity and environmental preservation, hemp emerges as a critical player in fostering ecological health, combating climate change, and paving the way for a more sustainable future. The exploration of hemp's environmental impact not only underscores the necessity of embracing sustainable practices, but also highlights the potential of natural resources in contributing to a healthier planet. As we move forward, it is imperative that we continue to research, advocate for, and implement hemp-based solutions across sectors, embracing its environmental benefits as a cornerstone of sustainable development. I think it's crazy. I wish that, like, there was just more... I just think it's crazy there's not more hemp shit. I know that, like... You know, I would pass them out to the class, but I can't. Hey, you know what they say. If you bring one for yourself, you better bring one for everybody. Everybody. So, what I'll do is I'll just eat it for you. And then you have to tell us how it tastes in everything. So. It tastes amazing. These are strawberry, blueberry. They're CBG. And I have severe ADHD. Beans will tell you. I get squirrely. I squirrel all the time. But the gummies are really good because they last a lot longer than the candy. And I feel you get a better coverage. But tincture in, I'm going to get that blast in immediately. And that'll carry me through. And just when that starts to wean off, the gummy will pick it up. Then a hard candy in the afternoon. So, all of them together kind of makes everything better, in my opinion. What do you think, Beans? I do fucking love the gummies. I um, only eat about one a day because I try to make them last, but I mm -hmm. fucking love them, and I can't agree more. Um, they're perfect for if you just need a little boost or whatever, and they're delicious. There's a motherfucker. They really are so good. So good. I, think, I think that people would make them last more if Jay made them taste like not so good. <laughs> oh, man, that's the problem. I have to taste them. And if I don't like them, they're not going out the door. <laughs> they have to taste good. It's just got to be so good. And he just keeps making combinations that are phenomenal. Okay, Karen. So I think um, I think the next flavor I'm going to have him make um, is that orange creamsicle into that hard candy. He did the test run for me, and he made it into Lifesavers. So that was pretty good. So I think that'll probably be the next candy that we make. And it was CBD-CBG combination in the candy, which we haven't done yet. So I think, I think I'm looking forward to it because it's almost like an immediate release. So... I think uh, I think it's a good idea, and that's a hell of a flavor. Well, you've had it in gummies. Yeah, I do have some that I haven't even opened yet, like the bubble gum hard candies. I haven't even opened yet. Um, yeah. I think I have one more. It's over here. I've got a pile of wrappers and shit. But 
I got a <laughs> pile of wrappers because I yes. hate it. Can't blame you though. I mean, it is pretty fucking magical. So, all right. Yay. Here we go, everybody. Thank you all for joining UB University today. It's been an enriching journey as we navigated through the diverse world of hemp, exploring its industrial uses, remarkable contributions to textiles, nutritional benefits, medical innovations, and last but certainly not least, its positive environmental impact. Each segment of our discussion today underscores not just the versatility of hemp, but also its potential to contribute significantly to a more sustainable, healthy, and environmentally conscious world. Your engagement and curiosity have made today's exploration both meaningful and enlightening. As we wrap up today's session, I want to extend a special note of appreciation to each of you for your active participation and thoughtful questions. It's your eagerness to learn and challenge yourselves that truly brings UB University to life. And before we officially close for the day, I'd like to take a moment to wish one of our Gold Star students, Ma, a very happy birthday. Ma, your contributions to our discussions always add depth and perspective, enriching our collective learning experience. May your year ahead be filled with joy, discovery, and continuous learning. As we part ways today, I encourage you to reflect on the lessons learned and consider how you might apply this knowledge to your own lives, communities, and the broader challenges our world faces. Remember, education is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's about inspiring change. Thank you once again for joining UB University today. I look forward to seeing you all in our next session, where we will continue to explore and uncover the wonders of our world. Class is dismissed. Yay! I love that. Class is dismissed. And she said, happy birthday, Ma. She did say happy birthday, Ma. Wasn't that so very nice of her? And you're a gold star student? I don't, what, why am I not yeah. a gold star student? She it's probably gets cookies, too. It's your birthday. It's Cook okay, though. Cookies. She gets all the cookies. Happy yes, birthday, Ma. I love it. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Ma. to you. And 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 Miss Bean is coming on. You guys can do yoga, yoga. Yes, birthday yoga. Birthday yoga, yay! That's fantastic. I'm excited about birthday yoga. Oh, you dirty dog, you. Glad you didn't. <laughs> and I was thinking about cutting glass today. <laughs> we would all have been like, hmm, where's Ma at on her birthday? Her empty desk is sitting over there. Weird. <laughs> The window is open. How odd. Nobody noticed her climbing out the window. And Henny was like. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it, you guys. Let's do another song and then we'll do. Uh, uh, you, Miss Mina should be here shortly ish or something. I don't want to rush anybody. So. No rushing. No rushing at all. Oh, Kay's working on a dog cake. She found a mini bump cake pan. Oh, there you go. Now you're See? thinking, Kay. You can do anything you put your mind to. You just have to, like, do it. Yeah. Amazing, though. Yes. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Now that the teacher's gone, we can get higher than we were. Yeah. Teacher's always getting in the way. Yeah.
Cheers, Karen. Birthday, Ma. Happy birthday, Ma. Let's do. <coughs> Ooh, here we go. <coughs> We're waiting on Miss Bean in no rush. So, choose your gift. <coughs> oh, well. Three. Choose your hot dog, too. <coughs> Leo. Well, I don't eat meat, so. <laughs> None of them would go to me. Right, this is where I thought it was at all. I don't eat McDonald's either. <laughs> Beans tell me to pick hot dogs, and I don't even eat hot right, dogs. I did not. <laughs> yeah, ooh, here we go. I'm not sure what this one is, but choose a box. Ooh. The middle one. Purple. Pink bow. Pink bow. I'm going purple. Oh, oh. dang. They totally rigged that one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going rainbow. Yeah, it can't be two shitty ones in a row. <laughs> Oh, Aww. I'll Let's take him. I would have taken any one of them. They're all cute. Purple. Ooh, I'm going purple. Purple. Yeah, CJ's going purple too. Oh, Ooh. I'll take it. I mean, I've slept in worse. Yeah, I'm still taking the middle one instead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll go one just because I haven't yet. Yeah, I'll go with one too. I'll stick with you, Beans. Ooh. I mean, I'll take it. Whatever. Yeah. Dude, well, there's two microphones, so we can share. I'm going to take that middle box again. I like the rainbow. Oh, yeah. Look what I picked, Beans. Oh, you missed it. Oh, choose your yacht. Um, one. Purple. Oh. Purple's a bad idea. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the rainbow. I couldn't even think of the word. I, I knew it's box Ooh, Ooh, yeah. I mean, okay. They're all kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> Beans is like, I don't want nails. No. Uh, 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 ooh. Ew. I mean, I'll take it. It looks yummy. I, I won't need it. You can have the patty. 
Rainbow box. Uh, rainbow box. Yeah. Well, there you go. Oh, sorry, Uni. I'm gonna, I'll take yours and give you my potatoes. I'll eat the scallops. Oh, that's what they were. Okay. Yeah, I don't like scallops. Uh, pink. All right, you can have the steak and I'll eat the scallops. Fair. I didn't want the pink one. Why did I see pink? Oh, <laughs> damn it. Okay. Rainbow. Rainbow. Okay, okay. I mean, okay. Okay, okay, okay. They were black, and the other one was pink or purple. I'll take the purple one. Purple. Purple box. Purple for the win. Oh, I mean, they're oh, fine. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay with that. Okay, last one, everybody. Last gift. I'll take number one. I'm going rainbow the whole way. Okay, got. <sighs> okay. I'll cool. take it. Okay, one second. They sent you a cake. Oh, that's cool. A poto. A poto and a cake. It's a little bunk cake. Oh, sweet. Right? Okay. That's What's awesome. It? What kind of cake is it? Is it a sweet potato cake? Ew. Oh, I suppose for a dog, but you. Yeah, it's for puppy. Puppy likes sweet potatoes. All right, everybody. Miss Bina is here, and I believe she is ready. Yeah. All right. We are going to yoga, yoga. And I'm going to do lunch, lunch. All right. Love Bye. you. Bye. See ya. She's not, it's okay. It's, it's fine. How are you? Good, how are you? I love it. I'm good. Oh. <clears throat> well, okay. Okay. How's your Wednesday going? It's going. My husband had surgery yesterday, so I may or may not have bumped him in his sleep last night. So I didn't sleep very much and I feel really bad. Yes, but we're good. He's good. So that's all that matters, right? Well, it's uh, Ma's birthday today. She watches all the time. Happy birthday. I love that. Thank you. I'm so excited to share your birthday with you. Yes. So um, I will show you. I've done a few pictures for her, so I'll show you those after yoga. Okay. But we can go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Okay, let's, let's begin. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome. Let's do some yoga. Begin sitting in your seat. Feet are grounded on the floor. Your hips and sit bones are grounded in the seat. Shoulders are down your back. Closing your eyes. Being here. Letting go of whatever comes before this and whatever comes after. Breathing in and out of your nose, slowly and evenly. Seal your lips. Focus on your breath. Knowing the mind will wander, thoughts do come here and there, and that's okay. Acknowledge the thought and then release it. Thank you. 
On your next inhale, without moving or opening your eyes, slowly bring awareness back to your body. Wiggle your toes, your fingers, spread them out. Roll your wrists and your ankles. Reverse. Bring your legs out in front of you. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale everything down to the mat. You see your hands on your thighs, sitting up straight. And begin to sway side to side. Roll in your shoulders. Reversing the roll. Come back to center. <clears throat> Flip your palms so they're facing up. Bring them together so your pinky fingers and your ring fingers are touching. And then you bring them to your lap. This is a mudra. Closing your eyes here for a moment. We'll take three breaths in through the nose, out through the nose. Open your eyes, relax your hands, <clears throat> shake it up. Bring your hands out in front of you. Begin to wiggle your fingers. Moving your fingers, your tips, everything. Inhale your arms out in front of you, palms facing up. As you exhale, I begin to flex and point your wrist. And if it's more comfortable for you to have your palms facing down, whatever is necessary for you is where you should be. On your next inhale, I invite you to bring your palms face up. Exhale, bring your elbows, bend your elbows, bringing your hands up. Palms face each other. Inhale, bringing the elbows together, palms together. Exhale, opening up to the side. Inhale, slowly come back to center. Exhale, open. Inhale, back to center. Taking three more of those at your own pace in your own breath. Last one. Inhale out. Open up your hands. Shake it out. Roll your shoulders here because Lord knows I need it. Whatever you need, take. Actually, let's scoot up a touch on your seat, planting your feet on the mat, sitting up straight, placing your hands on your thighs. We'll come into our cat cows. So as you sit up straight, you will begin to inhale and lift your gaze up slowly, bringing your belly forward, chest is open, tail is lifted, not overextending the neck, enjoying our cow pose. And as we exhale here, slowly bring everything in, chin to chest for your cat. Inhale up for your cow. Exhale to cat. Inhale up. Shake it out. You can sit back a little if you need to on your seat so you get comfortable and you're safely seated. Inhale your arms out to the side. 
Exhale, bring your hands over your shoulders. Not touching, just over. As you inhale, your arms open. You will exhale to make a half circle with your hands. Inhale up. Exhale, half circle. Inhale up. Exhale, half circle. One more. Inhale your arms up to a T. Shake it out. Roll your wrists. Inhale your arms out in front of you. Bring your palms to face up or forward. Bring your thumbs in first and then wrap your fingers around your thumb, making your first mudra or the baby mudra. Begin to roll your wrist. Reverse. Now bend your elbows and make circles with your arms. Reverse your circles. This time we're going to do with our whole arm rotating with shoulders. Reverse. Last one, release the arm, shake it out. Ooh, that was a good one, Peter. Let's hug ourselves. Give yourself a hug. I call it the best friend hug because you are your best friend essentially. And you should love yourself like you love everybody else. Open it up, switching the arms. Bring the opposite arm on top. Give yourself a nice hug. Sway back and forth. Whatever you do when you hug somebody that you love, release your arms, shaking it out. Roll your shoulders, definitely, after all of that. Let's sit back in our seat comfortably, sitting up straight. We'll take some neck circles, well, neck stretches. So we're going to begin at center. And as we exhale, we'll bring our gaze down. Inhale to center. Bring your gaze down again. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale, bring your head back slightly. Inhale to center. Exhale back. Inhale to center. Exhale one more time. Inhale to center. Inhale here, making sure you're sitting up straight. Shoulders are back. Exhale, release your right ear over to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale to the right one more time. Inhale to center. Exhaling to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale one more time. Inhale to center. Last one to the left. Inhale to center. Closing your eyes and making baby circles with your nose. Reverse. Roll your shoulders here. Bring 
Bring your right hand to your left shoulder. Exhale, bring your gaze over to the right slightly. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale to center. One more. Exhale to the right. Come back to center slowly. Release that left hand or the right hand. Roll your shoulders if you need to. Inhale the left hand to the right shoulder this time. Exhale to gaze to the left slightly. Inhale to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale one more time. Inhale to center. Release. Shake it out. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, twisting to the right. Bring your right hand to the back of the seat. Left hand to the right thigh. Sitting up straight to exhale completely. And turn to the right if that's in your practice. Inhale back to center. Bring your arms up. Exhale, twist to the left. Bring the left hand to the bottom of your seat, right hand to the thigh, sitting up straight, exhaling completely, and then twisting if that's in your breakfast. Inhale back to center, arms overhead one more time. Exhale, forward fold wherever you're at. Inhale your right arm up. Exhale it down. Inhale it up one more time. Exhale it down. Inhale your left arm up. Exhale it down. Inhale it up. Exhale it down. Bring your hands to your thighs. Inhale to slowly come up halfway, then the rest of the way. Roll your shoulders, shaking it out. Let's work on our legs. Sit up on your seat if you need to, slightly. Same thing comfortably. Inhale, bringing your right leg up, spreading your fingers and bringing them in front of your shin. Dropping your shoulders. Sitting up straight. This is hugging the knee, position that you could be doing on the mat or in a chair. Rotate your ankles, spread your toes out, whatever you need to do to help open up and relax your leg. Reverse. On your inhale, release the hands, bring them under the thigh, and as you exhale, bring your foot out, foot flex, inhale back, knee to chest. Exhale, flex the foot, bring it out in front of you. Inhale it back. Exhale it out. Bend the knee, release the hands, bring the leg down. Inhale that left leg up, interlacing your fingers. Again, drop your shoulders, sitting up straight. Spreading your toes. Rotating your ankle, whatever you did on the other side is what you should do on this side. Release the hands, bring them under your left thigh. Exhale your left leg out, flex the ankle. Inhale, knee to chest. Exhale, straighten the leg. Inhale, knee to chest. Exhale, one more time. Inhale, bend the knee, dropping the left leg, shaking it out. We are going to do some standing poses. 
You may feel free to sit in your chair. You do not have to stand up, but I invite you to try something different. So again, I'm going to take my chair and bring it to face the front of my mat. And I will be facing the long edge of the mat facing you. We'll be coming into our mountain pose first. So you would stand feet hip distance apart, hands out to the side, palms facing forward. Dropping your shoulders, closing your eyes, feeling super strong and safe, grounded in this pose. Lips are still sealed, breathing slowly and evenly through the nose. On your inhale, I invite you to bring your hands overhead. Exhale, slowly release them down. Inhale them up. Slowly release. This time we're going to go from our mountain to our tall mountain. So I invite you to thread your hands, flip your palm, and inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, side bend to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale to center. One more time on each side. Inhaling to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, come back to center. And before you release the arms, I invite you to lift your right heel, bending the knee. Exhale it down. Inhale, bend left knee, bring that left heel up. Exhale it down. One more time on each side. At your own pace with your breath and your body. Now the last time we do it, I invite you to lift one heel and then the other. Coming into your tall mountain. Bring the heels down slowly, release the hands. Shake it out. Bringing your left hand to your left hip. And I invite you to inhale your right arm up to the sky, palm facing forward. And as you exhale, twist your arm so the palm is facing behind you, making a circle. Inhaling all the way back up so your palm faces forward. Exhale, release it, making that a circle. Swooping the hand around. Take two more, going slower, as slowly as possible, which you can see I have a hard time doing. Bring your hand, bring, bend your elbow, bringing your hand to your shoulder. Inhale your elbow in, exhale it out. Inhale it in. Exhale it out. Two more times. Last one. Make some circles. Reverse. Inhale that arm out. Shake it out. Take those hug, your best friend hugs, and give yourself a nice hug. Release it. Switching the time. Release it, open it up, shake it out again. This time we'll bring our right hand to our right hip. Inhale your left arm up. And as you exhale, palm faces behind you, bringing it down on the circle. Inhale, palm faces forward. Palm faces back. Exhaling, inhale. Two more, taking your own pace in your own body, in your own body.
Open it up to the side, flip the palm up, bend the elbow, bringing the hand to the shoulder. Inhale to center, exhale to open. Inhale to center, exhale to open. Two more. Taking your time. And this time, we make those circles. Reverse. Release your arm off, shake it out. Bring your feet a little bit further than hips distance. And begin again to sway your body just back and forth. We're gonna take a spinal twist. So you'll bend your left knee and you bring your arms up in front of you so your left hand will come to your right wrist, or I'm sorry, your right shoulder, and your right arm will be behind you. And as you twist to swing your arms around, you will straighten your left knee, bending the right. So you'll inhale to open, exhale to switch. Inhale to open, exhale to switch. Going a little bit faster if you'd like, not getting too crazy. Just stretching everything out. And your last one, bring it back to center. Stretch it out any way you need to here. And we are gonna come into some of our warrior poses. So I invite you to stand facing the back of your chair. Bring your right foot forward, lunging into your right knee, bringing your left foot behind you. So your hips will be facing forward. Essentially, you're in your warrior one pose, positioning. Bring your hands to the chair. Inhale your left heel up, and your right knee is still lunging. So your left leg is straight, and your right knee is bent. Inhale your right arm up. Exhale, take a circle, or three. Reverse your circle, not losing the lunge in your left or in your right knee. If at any time you need to bring your left heel down, feel free. I invite you to bring your right arm up, open it up to the side, inhale it back to center, open it up, inhale it back to center, drop that hand, Inhale your left arm up, exhale, make that circle, and come back up, exhale, come back up on the inhale. Last one. I invite you here to be brave and bring both arms up on either side of your ears. Bring your hands down to the chair, plant that left heel, bending the left knee, Bring your right foot back to meet the left. Inhale your gaze up. Exhale to forward fold. You can bend your knees if you'd like. You can sway back and forth. You can, whatever you need is what you should do. Bring your hands to the bottom of the seat. Inhale your gaze up. Exhale, coming into your down dog. Feel free to bend your knees here. You can also walk your feet out behind you if that's more comfortable. Wherever you are is okay because every day isn't the same and that's okay too. Inhale, halfway lift. Bring your hands to the top of the seat. Come all the way up. Open up your right arm and your right leg, coming into the five-point star. Feet will face forward. Inhale your arms up. Exhale them down. Inhale them up. 
Exhale them down. Inhale them out to a T. Bring your left arm to the seat. Bending your left knee, bringing the left foot to face the back of the seat. Cartwheel that right arm to the back of the seat. Flip it on that foot, bending your right knee, bringing it up some. Lunging into your left knee here, coming again into your warrior. So you'll inhale your right heel up. Inhale your left arm up. I have to scooch back a little, I apologize. There we go. Make those circles. You inhale up, exhale to release. Coming back. Open arm twist to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale, open arm twist to the left. Inhaling. Last one. Come back to center. Bring that left hand down. Inhale that right arm up. Exhale to open up to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale to center. I invite you to bring both arms up, dropping your shoulders. Drop that right heel, plant the hands. Bring that left foot back, coming again into your forward fold. So you'll inhale and then you'll exhale to hinge up the hips. If you don't want to hold a chair, you can always bend your knees and bring either arm and hand to either elbow. And you can sway back and forth. If that's not in your practice today, then just stay up here, closing your eyes or gazing at the floor. If you'd like to take it a step further, I invite you to come into your down dog, bringing your hands to the seat of this chair, and your head will be between your arms, gazing at your belly button. Bend your knees on the exhale, bringing your hands to the back of the seat. Inhale all the way up. Bring your left foot out to the side, right foot to face, the long edge of the mat. Inhale your arms up. Bring your hands to heart center. Bowing your head. Releasing the hands, shaking it out, and then we'll find our seat for our Shavasana. Great job, everybody. That was awesome. I'm very proud of you. You did a really good, really good job. Now you've done the work. It's time for the yoga dessert, as they say. It's your Shavasana. So I invite you to sit comfortably in your seat, sitting back if you'd like, dropping your shoulders. Close your eyes here. Letting go of your forehead and your jaw. Relaxing your shoulders, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles and your toes. Taking your rest, I'll call you back.
On your next inhale, without moving or opening your eyes, I invite you to bring awareness slowly back to your body. First your toes, then your ankles, your knees, your thighs, your shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingertips, neck, Roll your shoulders both ways. Inhaling your arms overhead one last time. Palms meet, bring them down to your heart center, bowing your head and closing your eyes. Self-care is self-love, and you are your best friend. So love yourself like you love your best friend. You are amazing and capable of doing anything. The light in me honors and sees the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste, Miss Bina. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. Yes, I always love good yoga. That was uh, intense, so. See, okay, so I need to know how you all feel about getting up and standing up. Are you guys comfortable with where you're at? Are you okay with me doing this? Um, I, I personally, I think I like the pace where we go back and forth. I will see what people say in the comments, and I will bring them up. Oh, this is for, thank you for the happy birthday. This came in right before we started yoga. You're welcome. Happy, happy birthday, love. I hope your day is amazing, just like you. Yes, that's what I've been saying. She's just like, meh, and I'm like, eh. And I'm like, no, you okay. love yourself, this lady. <laughs> You gotta love yourself. Yes, you do. Yes, I um definitely realized I don't have the balance that I thought I did. The mountains, the side mountains, those were hard. Those oh, were good. Okay. I'm not complaining. I'm not saying but I enjoyed no, I it. 100%. Um, I always like the cat cow. I think those are good. I love the cat cow too. I try to always incorporate at least one cat cow into every chair. Um, so. I love all the things, but um, I want you to have confidence. I don't want you to think that you have to stay seated for your yoga. I right. want you to know that you can, you can most definitely stay where you're at if that's what you want. But I want you to see the potential I know you have. So that's why I'm going to push a little bit. But on your terms, not on my terms. Well, I can definitely feel it. Like, I feel... I open, feel so right? Better. Yeah, I feel so much open and I feel so much better after yoga. Yes, I love it. Me too. I've been really tight in my shoulders. I've been stressed out lately, so I've been trying to work extra. And I feel like we're so like this. Yes. And we're always doing this or you know what I mean? So I've yep. got to undo all yeah. that. Yeah, I can definitely. And it's weird how one side of my body is so much tighter than the other side. Yes. And it's opposite. Like my right um, shoulder is more tense, but this one is tighter. But okay. it moves better. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, like when you're doing the shoulder, like that one is way, it's way harder for me to do that than it is this, which is just weird. Yes. One side of your body is always more difficult than the other side. Hmm. And that's normal, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So I always try to remind everybody that it's okay too, because some days I can do a forward fold and I'm, I'm bent up like this. And then other days I'm like, eh, we're up. <laughs> you know? it, and I do yoga every single day of my life, all the time. So, it, you know? It, yeah, it and like, even my lower back and my feels so much better. You know, I'm not saying it hurt or anything, but I can I can feel the difference. It's crazy. You didn't know it was tight until it wasn't. Any, you know? Right, exactly. Yes. That's yeah, it. absolutely. So I do have a few pictures for Ma's birthday that I've been showing her. Would you like to see them? Absolutely. I would love to. Okay. So we got this one. I love that it's gorgeous. Yes, I oh, love it. Butterflies. I saw my first butterfly in Michigan yesterday. Oh, snap. Yes. And then this one. Oh, that one's awesome. Thank you. Yes, I love it. I love it so much. She's so awesome. 
I love this. I'm, all the colors and the flowers. I love it. And then I figured I'd go with a vintage one. That one's badass too, though. Holy, that's a tattoo. Right? That's amazing. And then this one. Oh, that one's cool. That reminds me of like uh, Yosemite, Sam, and Coyote, and all that. For okay, some that's cool. I like that. And then. Oh, wow. that's what it was. And this one. Oh, that one is amazing. The eagle is so cool. Thank you. You're welcome. You are so talented. I wish. I have trouble just signing on. Sometimes it takes me eight minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> I was supposed to be on time. No, it's okay. I get it. And it's, you know, it's just a lot of messing with it. And I truly, truly enjoy doing it. And especially for you know, people like Ma, who is so amazing and deserve it so much. And it's her birthday. Absolutely. Happy birthday. Happy so birthday. So what are your plans for the rest of your day, Miss Bina? Um, I have a 5 o'clock class, and then I have a private session with a student at 6.30, so I'm super excited. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we had a nice talk yesterday, so I have a whole thing in mind already to give her. Um, I'm just excited because I saw a cardinal this morning too. Yes. And that was, and he was looking right at me. Like I'll post a picture later. He was like, Hey girl, I see you. And I was like, yes. yes. He's like, hold on. Brings just, it's here. It's coming. Just hold on a little longer. Yep. I have a couple of errands to run. I think I might actually go lunch mom at the school again because those kids, I miss them. They miss me. And, if I have the energy, I try to do it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I don't blame you one bit. I would as much as I could, too. So, yep. All those kids need love, so I try to help everybody. What are your plans, Sir Beaner? Well, this afternoon, we're going to birthday party it up with um, Ma for her birthday. Awesome. And we'll play some birthday games and then just kind of hang out, work on some stuff around here. It's been a, it's been a really good day so far. So. Awesome, yes. I will try to catch everything, but once, like... 215 happens and all the kids start getting out of school. It's yep. over. Absolutely. So. I understand that fully. So well, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your birthday, Ma. Thank you all. Have a good one. Bye, Miss Vina. Bye. I love Miss Vina. She's so awesome. So yes, it's been an amazing morning, I think. I uh have had so much fun hanging out with you guys and celebrating Ma's birthday with you guys. It's been incredible. It's the best way to spend the day, I think. Let me throw it in four. Oh, no, I don't want that one. There we go. Yes, yeah, so that was a really good yoga session. I really feel like it's great. Like she said it perfectly. I was like, I didn't really, you know, she took the words right out of my mouth. I wasn't, I didn't realize how tight my back was until it's not, you know, like, like I don't, you know, I sleep on a couch, which is fine. I'm not complaining. Um, But I, so my back, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't really ever hurt. I mean, it gets sore, but it's crazy. Like how, you know, especially sitting in the chair or whatever, this is an old ass chair, but yeah, that was awesome. So what does everybody else have planned for today? Anything exciting, amazing, extravagant going on? It's Ma's birthday, in case you guys didn't hear or know. Happy birthday, Ma. Hope you have an amazing birthday lunch. Do you have anything special planned for your lunch? I'm going to work around here a little bit. Maybe make something for lunch, hang out with the doggos. Happy birthday, Ma! Hi, Amanda. How are you today? One second. I hope you're having an amazing day, Amanda. Thank you so much for popping in. We got about 10-ish minutes left or so. Probably an early dinner. Yeah, absolutely. What if you? What is your your favorite birthday dinner? We could do a couple more of the, the birthday questions quick. I enjoyed those. Ooh, this is a good one, Ma. 
Thank you, and you probably got dinged for that, and I'm so sorry. But even if you didn't... Fuck you, Facebook. Yes, that's what... Yeah, what he said. And thank you. I'm doing good. Chilling. King Crab Legs. Ooh, dang. That sounds delicious. Okay. What's one thing you want to accomplish before your next birthday? My birthday is coming in June, and so I would say this is a pretty amazing accomplishment before my next birthday. Ah, I cheated on that one. Loophole. Amanda, you can answer too, absolutely. Whoever, I mean, anybody can answer. I'm just kind of curious. We're just doing some birthday-themed questions this morning. So please make sure everybody lose weight. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think that everybody should have some sort of goals, even if it's just a daily goal for like do the damn dishes. I don't know. Goals are always a good thing. Okay. walk more. Yeah. I hate it because it gets cold up here in the winter and then I don't walk the dogs. I can't walk the dogs. Morgan's paws get so cold. And I get cold. And so, but I love it once it starts getting nice out. I take the dogs out and walk them in the evenings and stuff like that at night, late at night actually, not evening at all. Who would invite to your dream birthday party, living or deceased? Um, Probably my grandpa because I've never met my grandpa. My dad's dad. Um, I'll invite all of you to my birthday party. And, um, hmm. We're going to cease. Probably, I think it'd be cool. Paul Walker would be great just to get, just hang out with him. Um, living, there's so many damn living celebrity type people. But, like, I would much rather just hang with y'all. Hmm. Your parents, okay. Um, ooh, this is a good one. If you could have any band or artist perform at your birthday, who would it be? Come on, send. Oh, geez, now it's just taking forever to send the comment. There it is. Oh, my goodness, the list. It depends on my mood. I don't even know. Like, Probably a cover band, so they could play multiple songs. No, not really. Um, let's see here. Ringo, very nice. I don't know if I could choose. There's just, I uh, I would be. It's much easier for me to like choose a celebrity type person versus like a band. Sting, that would be good. Yeah, see, like any sort of musician, I'm just honored to meet any sort of musician and hang out with any. Um, ooh, this is a good one. What's one childhood birthday you'll never forget? This is a good one. Do a couple more and then we'll smoke one last one and call it a morning and be back for this afternoon. By the way, everybody, calligraphy is going live this afternoon at 5. So I would love it if everybody could...
pop over there, show them all the love and support. I fucking love Means. He's an amazing dude, and I try to show him all the support that we can. So, absolutely. I know we'll be live also, but if you have, you know, please, I don't mind what's, you know, pop over, show your love, support. Spread the love, absolutely. Especially to those who spread the love back, so. Too old to remember? All right. Okay, what about... Ooh, if you had a genie that could grant you three birthday wishes this year, what would they be, Ma? My three wishes would be some weed. Gotta have some good weed. Health, prosperity, and peace. That's a good answer. I'll give that a good answer. All right, we're gonna do a wacky one quick, and then we'll probably call it. All right, my your birthday now officially marks the discovery of a brand new planet. What do you name it, and what's unique about it? Okay, wait, hold on one second, K. Okay, one second, no, it's fine, we're almost, I mean, it's okay, let me, okay, more frosting, I would say, it looks amazing, but more frosting, maybe, and, some bones, I would say. I think that would be cool. But I think it looks great. Absolutely. Here is before the, the frosting. I think it looks amazing, okay? But yeah, I would just do more frosting. But I think that... I think that it looks great. I think the little doggo is going to think it's amazing. Wrong button. Uh -huh. Indica, the most unique and delicious indica you could ever find. I like that. That's a good answer. All right, my fabulous friends. Okay, yeah, uh, or, I mean, or whatever you have, you know. I don't know. If you've got little paw prints, would be cool. I think the paw prints would look good, too. So, okay. Let me. Uh-oh. The dogs are going to bark. They heard something in the cat's room. Stop, Morgan May. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Happy freaking birthday, Ma. I, I hope it's been an incredible, amazing day. I hope that you have an amazing dinner. And I hope that 
you to come back this afternoon and hang out because we're going to play. We're going to try to beat 108 freaking happy birthdays. That's craziness. Much love to everybody. Um, again, check out Calligraphy's Live this afternoon. Please and thank you. It'd be great. Show all the love and support to those who love and support and show it to us. Uh, mad love to Taylor and Concentrates. Today is if you buy any pack of edibles, you get the second one 25% off. So please go up there. Um, I mean, yeah, it looks delicious. Okay. And I'm not even a dog. It just looks good. But mm, I'm also high. It's been a morning of coffee and weed and amazingness with you guys. So I will see you guys this afternoon. Have an amazing lunch. And um, mm, yeah, all that good stuff. So cheers, my friends. Thank <laughs> you.